is suing his family friend, Brandon Foreman, for the cost of four pigs, a hog waterer, and lost wages. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2181, Moore versus Foreman. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Moore, you're suing the defendant because it is your claim that you sold him, I believe, four piglets, and he never paid you for them. Yes, Your Honor. That's what the case is about. Now, tell me where you live. I live in Pinehurst, but outside of Pinehurst uh, South, in a valley. Pinehurst is where? Uh, in Idaho. So you live in Idaho? Is yeah. that a farming community? Yes, small. Who do you live there with? Me, my mom, and my sister. You have a farm? Yes. How many acres? Right now, five, yes. We're working on uh, buying land next to us. But right now, you have five acres. Tell yes. me what you raise. Right now, we raise cows, pigs, and goats. You own that property? Yes, Your Honor. How long have you owned that property and raised those farm animals? Lived on the property uh, my whole life, raised farm animals since I was about 16. And you sell them for what? I mainly do meat animals, so when it comes to beef, cattle, pigs, uh, meat, goats. But you sell them on their own hoofs? Yes. Yep, on the hoof, not by meat. And what do you do, Mr. Foreman? An underground shift supervisor. What is that? Underground miner. Do you live close by to Mr. Moore? I live a couple miles above him. How long have you lived there? Going on five years. Tell me what interest you have in pigs. Me and my buddy, we have a hobby, so to speak. He has cattle at his place, and I have raised pigs at mine. How many acres is your house? Just over five. All you raise are pigs? Correct. And I assume you sell the pigs for meat? Correct. When was the first time, Mr. Foreman, you purchased pigs from Mr. Moore? Probably two years ago now. OK. How many did you purchase? The first time? First time. I think there's three. How much did you pay for them? I don't recall. Well, how much would three piglets be? Uh, I want to say it was 400 and some change. For three? Correct. OK. That was a couple of years ago. Correct. Did you sell those pigs? Correct. They're not part of your current lifestyle? No, no. And you keep them for how long before you sell them? Until they make a certain weight, about 250, 280 pounds. Now, when you buy them from the plaintiff or from anybody, how big are they? The ones that I purchased from Logan were small, probably 30, 40 pounds, maybe. So they must eat a lot for them to get to 250. A lot. And give me some idea, because I really don't know the answer to this question. How much would you sell a 250-pound pig for? If they're totally butchered, cut, and wrapped, it's about eight to $900. If I'm doing the cutting and wrapping. And if you're not? Then I sell it for hanging weight. So whatever the animal weighs after it's butchered out, then there's, we set a price for that, usually. Three fifty to four dollars a pound. You pay about a hundred and a quarter for them. You feed them for a year. Not quite a year, but close. Okay, well, not quite a year, and then you sell them for six or seven times what you paid for them, minus the feed, whatever that is, minus what it is to. Feed. Except for there's more than just the feed. There's all the time and labor it goes into cutting. Oh, and absolutely. And but you make a profit. Make a profit, yes. And you don't go that route. You sell them when they're young. Correct. That's your business, to that sell is. them when they're young? Yes. OK. So the first time Mr. Farman bought from you, evidently things went well. Tell me about this most recent sale where there is an issue. Yes, so Brandon contacted me uh, that I had four pigs available. Did you advertise that you had them available? I did not. I have a family member that works at a gas station that he goes to. She mentioned to him that I have pigs for is sale. Is that how you found out? That is correct. OK. Uh, uh, that I had pigs for sale, and then he got my number from her. He contacted me, said that he is interested in my pigs. We set up a time for him to come meet and look at the pigs. What date? It was July 28th, 2022. Okay. And then he came and looked at the pigs then, and he liked them. How old were they? They were two and a half months, which would be right around 40 to 45 pounds. And you had four of them? Four, correct. Is that how many there were in the litter or however? Uh, no, those were just the ones I had left. There were nine in that litter. So you had already sold five? Yes. And four left? Yes. Is that the time you usually buy them, Mr. Farman, when they're two and a half months old? No. How old are they when you usually buy them? It depends. Depends on what? Uh, price, money, okay. where they're at. Well, so give me 
a range. What so these ones are relatively close. I didn't have to travel far. At the time, they seemed like a pretty decent prize deal. And what did he sell them to you for? He wants to take the pigs. You didn't have any money at the moment. And what was the deal that you came up with? That I would pay him for him when I was able to. Nah, that I don't believe. That's... That I don't believe. That is the truth. Then he's foolish, because when are you able to? Logan Moore claims his family friend, Brandon Foreman, owes for the cost of four pigs. Brandon says Logan sold him pigs that were sick. Okay, what did he sell them to you for? I believe for the four pigs and water, it was seven twenty. Twenty-five. Four pigs and there was a water a little mach machine that you also... No, it was just a plastic tote with, with uh, nipples on it for the pigs to drink water out of. Okay. There was no machine, no nothing to so it. So for $725, you got the four pigs and this machine. It's Whatever. not a barrel. Whatever, a waterer, a hog waterer. Correct. Anybody have a picture of that to show me? I do not know. I'll have to use Judge my imagination my... based upon Mr. Foreman's. Oh, you have a picture of I it, may... sir? Your Honor. Why? Uh, it was seven hundred and forty dollars, uh, one sixty each for the pigs, and then a hundred for the water. Judge, I do not. Hmm? I do not have a picture of the water. Okay. The water was like a two hundred and seventy-five gallon tank with four nipples on the outside of it at the bottom that you can fill with water. Pigs uh, drink out of the nipples easier than they do like a dish. Whatever. I, I get the picture. Okay. Now, let's say I take your number, Mr. Farman, seven hundred and twenty-five dollars. You purchased the pigs on July twenty-eighth, twenty twenty-two. Is that right? Correct. Did you pay him for them? At the time that I went and looked at the pigs, I told him up front, and plain as day, I do not have the money to pay you right now, right off the bat. I don't have the money. But I was under the understanding from his relative that works at the gas station that he doesn't have the time. No, no, no. You can't tell me what the relative of the gas <coughs> but, station told you. You went to see the pigs. I went to see the you, pigs. You went to see the pigs, Mr. Foreman, and you told me a moment ago. I said, how much were the pigs and... She's going to read back exactly what you said. You asked him, did you pay for them? And he said, at the time I went and looked at the pigs, I told him up front, plain as day, I do not have the money to pay you right now. Before that, okay. it was something about $725. Okay. How much were they? And he said the whole thing, the four pigs and a water, a watering was $725. $720 for the pigs and the water machine. $720. $720. Well, that's what you said. You said they were $720. That was the discussion when you went and looked Correct. at the pigs. Okay, and you said, I don't have money right now. Correct. And? So then we came up with a deal that... Look at me. Don't look down. So you came up with a deal. You wanted to take the pigs and the watering thing. You wanted to take the pigs. You didn't have any money at the moment. And yeah. what was the deal that you came up with? That I would pay him for him when I was able to. Nah. Nah. That I don't believe. That's... That I don't believe. That is the truth then he's foolish, because when are you able to? When I was able to. What does that mean? That means you determine whether or not when and if you're going to pay for these things that you took? It depended on when I was able to have the money available. That was in July? Correct. You work in a mine? Correct. You work for a company? Correct. How long do you work for them? Three years. Mm -hmm. You get paid annually or by the hour? Annually. And what's your pay annually? 90000 give or take. Give or take a what? I get bonuses. Okay. You're going to get in the month of January a 1099. How much did you earn last year with bonuses? I don't know. I haven't received my bonus yet. Oh, you haven't received it yet? Okay. So it's $90,000 base pay. Who else do you support? My wife and five children. What does your wife do? Stay at home mom. When was the last time you sold any pigs? That's been a while. How long? Month and year? It's been probably six months, six, seven months. Okay. How many did you sell? At the time, that the last... Six or seven, in the last six months, how many did you sell? One or two. Well, I want you to think carefully. If you're on a salary and you have a wife and five children, that it's important if you make between eight and nine hundred dollars for each pig that you have. I want to know if it's one or two. It was two. And let's say I'm not going to take the higher figure, I'll take the lower figure. 
That's $1,600. You said between eight and $900 each. That's $1,600 plus your income from your job. Unfortunately, that eight to $900 that I get for a pig, that doesn't all go to me. I split that equally with the person that I cut with, the one that raises the cattle that I spoke about. I don't understand, sir. I have the I shop, you... I, have, I have the space, the shop, the meat cooler, the room at my house to hang and cut animals. He comes up and he helps. We split it equally, right down the middle. So the so that eight you or nine hundred dollars, I don't get so that. Just a second. He raises cattle. Correct. And you split his cattle with him, and you have pigs, and he splits the pigs with you. No, no. I let him use the shop and my meat cooler. The cattle's his deal, but he comes up and helps me cut and wrap the pigs. Oh, that, then he doesn't get half. That baloney. <laughs> That's baloney. If you raise them, you feed if, them, if you pay for them. If he wraps them, you're not giving him half. In any he's, event, it's not. In any event, you have a job. You have a ninety thousand dollar plus job. You made a commitment of seven hundred and twenty dollars to the plaintiff to pay for his pigs, and you paid nothing. The pigs died. Just a second. I read that here. Tell me when the pigs died. Tell me the month and day the pigs died that you communicated with him. This pig died, that pig died, this pig died. I didn't communicate with him about when the pig died or Did when the pig Did you communicate with him at all? I'm sorry when he asked you for the money. Yes, I'm sorry. I was. In... Okay, when he said, where's my money, that was in what month? I know when, July 28th is when you picked them up. In what month did he communicate and say to you, I want my pigs or I want the money? Tell me. August. August what? One was August 16th, one was August 17th. Okay, so he communicated with you the 16th and the 17th of August. So by this time, you've had the pigs at your place for about two and a half weeks, from the 28th to the 16th or the 17th of July. And the first one had already died in that. Just a second. During that time. Now, when did the first pig die? A week and three days after I got it home. Did you tell him? No. Oh, then you're going to pay for all of them, sir. What? You're going to pay for all of them. That's no. Oh, yes. But just show me that you said to him, one got sick, it died. I'm afraid for the others, so I just as soon give them back to you and cancel this whole deal. Show me. I offered multiple show times me. to take the pigs back to show him and me. the water. Show me. Just show me. Logan Moore has accused his family friend Brandon Foreman of refusing to pay for the pigs he purchased. Brandon claims Logan sold him sick pigs and only one survived. Go ahead. So if you went to the grocery store and you bought a bag of apples and the apples were rotten in the middle, but the outside looked fine, you would still pay for those and just be content I'm with them? I'm going to give you the different examples, sir, not apples. I'm going to give you an example with puppies, which I have here all the time. Your pigs were not sold to you with any health guarantee. Let's start there. Dogs, cats, animals, pet animals are usually sold through a breeder or somebody that you buy from. You have a contract that says, take the dog or the cat to the vet within the next three days or the next 24 hours or 48 hours. Any health deficiency in the cat or dog, we will either refund your money or give you a new cat or a new dog the discretion of either the buyer or the seller. That's what happens. Now, you had the animals at your place for two weeks, and I assume you have other animals. Just assume you have other animals. I had other pigs at the time. I had. Just assume you have other animals, and I also assume that you have no vet report. I do. I'd like to see it. This isn't a vet report. It's the bill. I don't care about a bill. I want a report. I don't have a report. I have well, a bill. Well, then, sir, you're going to pay him his $720. You're going to pay him his $720. I don't care what the bill was. How does he know? How do I know what the pig picked up, the one that died, at your place it over the course of a week and a half? What you said to me <laughs> was you took the pigs and said, I'll pay him when I can. Now they're yours. So I had other pigs at the time, full-grown pigs, that were ready to go. 
So then I brought these other piglets home. And then the one started getting sick, so then I had to separate the pigs. So then I had to spend all this time and money giving them shots, trying to keep them healthy. And then I had to build a whole separate pen to contain them because I don't want to get the full grown pigs getting whatever disease or whatever they had. Did you ever call the plaintiff when the first pig got sick and said, listen, this pig is sick and I'm not sure about the other piglets that are here and that's in the first two weeks. I'd like to return them to you. So you didn't have any babies at the time because he had sold five. He had nine in the whole litter or whatever they call it. Just show me that you said to him, one got sick, it died. I'm afraid for the others, so I just as soon give them back to you and cancel this whole deal. Show me where you did that the first two weeks in August. When I first picked up those that, pigs, just, I don't, show, just show me. I don't have that. Sir, then what I you're didn't. saying is unreasonable. It's not unreasonable. What? Why do I need yeah. to burden him with these sick pigs? But I'm not going to pay for a product that well, I then don't get then you've, become, then you've become the lawyer for the plaintiff, the lawyer for the defendant, and the judge. You said, I bought them. I didn't pay for them. But I shouldn't have to pay for them because now I had to build a whole separate pen. I had to separate them. And this is all without advising him. All without advising him and saying to him, listen, I didn't want to buy sick pigs. It looks as if these are sick pigs. I don't want the extra responsibility. I don't have the money right now. Take them back. I... Show me. I offered... Show me. I offered multiple show times me. to take the pigs back to show them. And me. the water. Show me. Show me within the first couple of weeks when one died, so you had to separate all of them. That's the first two weeks in August. That's all I want to see. Right here. I'd like to see August it, please. August 17th. Okay. Great. The one in blue. Shh. I'm reading. This doesn't say anything about sick pigs, sir. August 16th, 17th, with the two dates you gave me. This was on August 17th. He says, do you have the money to meet tomorrow or I'm getting law enforcement involved? You don't say one of the pigs is sick. One of the pigs died. I'll bring them all back. You say, I'm working on getting you the money. But if this is how it is, then I will bring you back the pigs and all tonight. I have some blank coming up that has taken precedence in my finances. I'm sorry that this has been less than ideal, but this is where I am now. That doesn't say anything about pigs being sick, dying. It says, I have other things to do with my money now. That's what it says, right? But I clearly That's offered what it to says. bring well, just, back. Just a second. <laughs> That's what it says. He didn't have a buyback agreement from you. Now, you have the pigs. Whether they died or whether they didn't die or whether they got sick, you've had them. Now we're in January, August, September, October, November, December. We're in January. We're six months later. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $720. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. Did not expect uh, Brandon to uh, mention sick pigs. They just went put on weight. They started not wanting to eat or drink anymore. Then they just got real skinny, no matter what I did or the vets did. Uh, he never told me. They just ended up passing away. If, I, if it was sick, I would put them in a treated pen that I have that's actually on concrete where they cannot pick up any other diseases from the ground. Some kind of infection. And I make sure the uh, animal is even safe for transport. I wasn't going to do the blood test on them to try to figure out. I honestly have done multiple payment plans with multiple farmers. I shouldn't have had to pay. And I will do it in the future, too. Got frustrated. I'm glad it's over. I don't have to chase my money anymore. So I don't know a lot about pigs or farming or, no. <laughs> or housing <laughs> pigs, but I was really surprised at the profit margin that the defendant was explaining. If you buy the pigs at 40 pounds, not also great at math or word problem math questions. So, but if you buy a pig at 40 pounds for $160, you have to feed it all the way up to 280 pounds in order to sell it to anyone. You have to, I don't even want to think about how much food that requires to feed the pigs. But then your profit, even if he wasn't splitting it with whoever helps him cut and yeah. butcher the, the meat, is only $800 as a high figure. That seems like a very low profit well, margin to have away pigs in your house and to have them in your backyard and build a pen with five kids. That just seems like a lot for a profit margin that I expected to be much higher. That's really labor-intensive work. That's, it just blew my mind.
Yeah. Different part of the world. Different kid. part of the world. So if you don't like that part of the world, <laughs> then you go to law school. I guess. <laughs> or you become a podiatrist. Or you visit. Or you visit. visit. Michael Attar is suing his former clients, Mary and Michael Rhodes, for unpaid demolition work. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2115, Attar versus Rhodes. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Attar, you were hired to do some, according to you, demolition work, another work at a property owned by Mr. and Mrs. Rhodes. You gave them an estimate for that work. I think the estimate was $11,500. Is that correct? Correct. And it was outlined what work you were supposed to do. You started that work, and according to you, at some point there was disagreement with either or both of the Rhodeses, and they stopped payment on a check that they gave you. And the check that they gave you was for $4,200. And then you stopped work for them. Yes, ma'am. We're and finished. So you're suing them for the canceled check and for other unpaid work that you did that you didn't get paid for. Correct. Mr. and Mrs. Rhodes say that they were not satisfied with the quality of your work. It cost them $9,000 to both replace things that were stolen from their property by either you or members of your team, something which I don't think that you question that somebody from your team, not you, Somebody from your team may have taken metal property of theirs that they didn't own. So let's go back. Mr. and Mrs. Rhodes, is this a new property to you or is this a property that you own for a while? It's a new property to us. That's what I thought. Yeah. So is it a private house? Uh, yes, and we were um, remodeling it. Okay, when did you purchase it? We purchased in January of 2020. I'm sorry, 2021. Is it a single family residence? Yes. How much did you pay for it? 769000 Describe the property to me. It's uh, in northern Altaloma or Rancho Cucamonga. Um, it's an acre property, has um, two levels on it, and a single-family ranch-style home on it right now. And what we asked him to do was demolition the lower half. Um, do you have a photograph? I do. I'd like to um, look at a this... photograph of what you wanted him to do. That's what the lower half looked like okay. before. So this whole portion you wanted him... Correct. ...to demolish, to demolish and remove, remove the degree. and grade flat. Is that correct, sir? I can't see from here, ma'am. Okay. Well, I'm going to show it to you. To demolish it, flatten it, fill it in... Remove all the debris. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And did you have a written contract? We did not. Well, that's always a mistake. Always. How did you find him? I believe I got his business card. Uh, it was on uh, my personal car, I think at uh, Home Depot. We had bought this house and we tried to find somebody to do the work, but very... Mr. Rhodes, let me tell you that the best way to find somebody is not somebody who leaves a card on your car at Clearly. Home Depot or any place else. Yeah. It was a difficult time to find contractors at, with COVID and everything at that time. And at the time, I'm also going to add, because I read in the paper somewhere at the time, he didn't have a license. He did not. And you knew he didn't have a license. Yeah. That's the first thing I told him, Your Honor. I do Just not a second. Evidence. They didn't say no, we didn't know. They said we knew. So he got somebody who had no license to do what you wanted him to do. Mm -hmm. And you got his number from a card that he left on your windshield. Did you ask for references? Uh, That's I, either a yes or a no. No. No, and I'm, no, I'm not really sure, actually, 100% on where I found that card. I think it, it would, doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, it, but we, it, he did tell us he was in the process of getting his license, uh, yeah, yeah, that it was yeah. coming. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. You're two intelligent people. Okay. So you hired an unlicensed contractor to do work on your house and agreed to pay him $11,500. Now, Mr. Rattar, the $11,000 included labor and materials. Is that correct? There was no material. It was labor no mater and bins. No well, bins. that's material. Labor and bins to oh, remove... Yes, ma'am. ...all the equipment that you needed... Yes, ma'am. ...to complete the job. Yes, ma'am. Is got that correct? Of before, too. Of what I was supposed to do, and Just, I took a picture. Uh, well, no, I have that. You have the wrong picture, me, Your Honor. Okay, I'd like to see the picture that he has. I was supposed to do from the post all the way to the other post, remove okay. everything, and the pool and the deck. Mr. Attar, the $11,500 was an all-inclusive figure. Yes, Your Honor. One of the things that became an issue is a bobcat. Correct. 
from what I'm piecing together, you hired somebody in a bobcat to do a bobcat. That's a big piece of equipment that knocks down something. I rented a bobcat. You, and somebody who operated it. My worker. You didn't know how to operate the bobcat. I didn't know how to oper operate bobcat, but I was controlling the demolition site, ma'am. I was like, many things Just were going second. at the same time. I had to control everything. Mr. Rattar, something happened with the bobcat, the original one that you got. What happened with it? It broke down on us. No, it didn't break down on them. It broke down on you. On us. It broke down on you. Yes. So what did you do? I took it back. And the next day, supposed to deliver me another one, but they sent me a drunk driver and a broken down, another broken down bobcat. I returned it. At that moment, I asked Mrs. Rose, "Can you please go down the down Home Depot, which is like a mile away, so we don't stop wasting time, rent a bobcat or not?" Just a second. Why should she rent a bobcat, sir? Your eleven thousand five hundred dollars included the bobcat. But I was. Your, I paid for no, the no, no. If you're going to pay for it, that's one thing. Then what are you sending her for? If your eleven thousand five hundred dollar figure included all materials, then she doesn't have to rent a bobcat. If you rented one that didn't work, rent one that works. How much of a down payment did they give you? Because it was $4,000. When did you start the job? I started the job on 15th of, November, of January. When did you leave the job? I was asked to leave on the, 7th, on the 2nd of February. On February 2nd? Yes, ma'am. Not to go back, but, I will call the cops on you. Between January 15th and February 2nd, other than the $4,000, did they give you any other money? Yes, Your Honor, they did. How much money did they give you? They gave me up to $7,000. So they gave you an additional $3,000? Yes, and, and $1,000 checks. Shh. Your Honor, that was within the first week we Just gave him it that. doesn't matter okay. to me. My question was between January 15th and February 2nd, they gave you $7,000. Correct. Explain the other forty-two hundred dollars, which is the check that they stop payment. Stop payment on. Yeah, I'll happily explain to you. The bobcat they she rented on by for me on, my, on her behalf. It cost three hundred and twenty-nine dollars to rent per day. And I rented for one day only, but they charged me eight hundred dollars. No, that's they, not correct. Just a second. <laughs> I didn't ask you anything. Okay. Do you have a photograph of what the property looked like when you left? Yes, ma'am. The last picture I took before I was kicked out of the property. You're talking. I'm not listening to you. Michael Attar claims his former clients, Mary and Michael Rhodes, owe for unpaid demolition work. Mary and Michael are countersuing for lost wages, equipment rental, and missing property. Now, they paid you $7,000. Correct. Correct. They wrote you another check. The final check was supposed to be $5,000, but they only gave me $4,200 because they mined well, $800 for the Bobcat just, rental. Just a second. First of all, the total bill wasn't seven and five. Seven and five, even my rudimentary math, is $12,000. That would be $500 more than your agreed contract, which was for eleven five. dollars they, they gave me $6,500 because they gave me small checks. They gave me the first initial Just check, a second. they gave me smaller ones. Sir, you're the businessman, whether you have a license or not. I asked you before how much money did they give you between January 15th and February 2nd, and you said $7,000. I didn't write it down, they, Your Honor. Well, you're here asking for money, I'm and you have to write it down. I'm you have to have work some... I've done performed already. No, just, no, 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 sir. And I just did the job, Your Honor. I did seven, eight other side jobs. For I them. don't care whether you did seven or eight side jobs. Your original agreement with them was for $11,500, including all material. Now. What you said to me was that they gave you $7,000, and you said they're supposed to give me another five. Well, another five is more than your quote. Ma'am, the balance was five. How? The initial check, then they gave me $1,000, $1,000, $1,000. How much on. money did you give them altogether that he cashed? $7,000. Then they owed you $4,500, pursuant to your agreement. We agreed to $11,000, not eleven five. Eleven five, Your Honor. Anybody have any proof no, of, no, what the the agreed, of what the agreed amount was? We had no, a verbal contract with me, Mr. Rhodes. Fine. I will indicate that it's $11,500. If they gave you seven, they don't owe you five. They owed you the difference between... 11.5 and the 7 that they gave you. Now, one of the things that you disputed, Mr. Attar, was this bobcat. Who paid for the bobcat? Show me. 
they minus the they minus it from the final price. Just a second. Was that an argument? The argument about is, uh, Your Honor, is they rented for one day, but they charged me two days, eight hundred dollars. There's no Bobcat rental for eight hundred dollars for two days. I got. Do you have the bill for the Bobcat? Honor. I do. Yeah. Yes, and it was for two could, days. Over a certain time. Because right? it was returned late, so they charged a second day. But in his text messages, he did request it for two days. Is that the total price? Yes, and I did not subtract just it from just his payment. Total contract was six fifty two seventy four. Yes. Do you have a photograph of what the property looked like when you left? Yes, ma'am. The last picture I took before I was kicked out of the property. You're talking. I'm not listening to you. Just show me a picture. Yes, ma'am. This is not a picture. Mr. Rattar, you're the businessman. Yes, ma'am. This is your company. Yes, ma'am. Company requires a a license before you operate, which you didn't have. If you do. B, it requires a written contract. You're the businessman. They're people who bought a house who got your number off a windshield someplace. You're the businessman, and you want the parameters. You want them fixed. So I don't know if it's eleven thousand or eleven five. Do you understand? Very much, Your Honor. Uh, right. Well, that's your mistake. You look as if you've probably been in business for a long time. Fourteen years. And is what you're telling me you don't have written contracts? All my contracts are verbal. Then how many times have you been in court, sir? Never. Never. I never had a stop payment check. Never well, paid me on it, time, Your Honor. I it's a problem, sir. When you finished, the debris wasn't all removed. That wood, they kept telling me, "Don't touch it." Their neighbor, cousin, whoever's going to come pick it up. That was just cut court wood. No, there's brick. There's wood, there's cement. We clean all that. I came. Uh, I, I just, personally clean just all that. a second. What I asked you, Mr. Rattar, was show me a picture of the property when you left. This is the picture that you showed me. It was the last before I had more work. I came in and did more. I wasn't taking I pictures. pictures. I wasn't expecting somebody to stop payment on a check, Your Honor. I, I was not expecting of that. What it looked like when he left. What about him? Well, what are you showing me here? This brick that's here? They piled it there and then left it there. Well, that's probably that's a good one. No, it was, to be, it was supposed to be removed. So this is the back. That's the this picture is... of the sagging patio because he removed part of the supports that were holding up the patio that he wasn't supposed to. So it's now sagging. Now, this is the picture that you gave me yes. when you told me that's this is standing. what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Level, cleared, and made flat. Right now, I want to see your picture of what this looked like when he left. You have it. It's in, it's in some of those the photos. Flat, leveled. You're talking about this? Yeah. That's part of it. The, the close-ups. Mm. That's part of it. Well, it looks like most of the stuff is done. It looked like a lot of cleanup left. No, ma'am. We yeah. done all the cleanup. Well, I, ha I haven't seen that. So then, what you're supposed to do is take a the photograph. Also, We're taking pictures. It was also while buried school. underneath. These are the photos of when. We did it ourselves and really leveled it out. And as we were doing that, we found so much buried underneath that was had should have been removed. But his bobcat person buried it all. Your Honor, mean buried the... all the debris, all the concrete okay. brick. Okay, and... let me see the bill Your Honor. from the. Sorry. No, we did it ourselves. We rented equipment and did it ourselves on his vacation. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, forty-five hundred dollars is so far what's owed on this contract. Now, your counterclaim is money owed for lost work, equipment rentals, labor, and missing damages to property. What money owed for lost work? During the second week that he was working, he called and said that his crew had left. This was the second day of use of him. supposed to be use of the Bobcat that I rented. I fired him, your okay. Honor. If you day. interrupt me again, I'm just dismissing your case. Do you understand? Thank you, Your Honor. Understand? Yes, ma'am. Very good. So Just explain lost work. Who's yeah. lost work? His. Oh, oh forget it. Well, he called and said his crew left. Forget it. He can't finish the job. You weren't living there. Not yet, no. You weren't living there. Okay. He wants to go, go. I'm not interested in his lost wages for taking care of his house. So far, you owe the man the balance on his contract, unless you had somebody else do it, which is absolutely fine. And I would look at that removal of debris, what it costs you, and you're absolutely entitled to that. Deducted. From what you owe him, which is forty-five hundred dollars. But he didn't finish the job. Just a second. 
You tell me, how am I supposed to gauge how much of the job he didn't finish? Did he not complete $2,500 worth? $3,500 worth? $1,500 worth? I think the seven we paid him was overpaid. He didn't have to end up removing an entire pool. He only had to remove... That's your problem. Just a second. I read that. You said it's not a big pool. It wasn't eight feet. It was only 24 inches. He gave you a price mm -hmm. to level everything. Nothing delineated, nothing in a written contract. The pool turns out to be two feet instead of six feet or two feet instead of eight feet. Well, if he was the contractor and he came out and he looked at the pool, he said, oh, this is an eight-foot pool, and it turned out it's a 12-foot pool, he'd be stuck with 11.5, just like you're stuck with 11.5 because it was shallower. Now, you owe him $4,500, unless you want to produce for me bills that you have for rental equipment, et cetera, and I will absolutely deduct that from the $4,500. Just give me the bills and the amount of equipment. Don't say nothing, <laughs> Mr. Retard. Mr. Rhodes, did you rent a bobcat? The one that I cleaned up the yard with? Yes. Uh, I, I rented a yeah, piece we... of equipment. Jump up! Yes. And you know how they pick up metal? No, I don't know that, sir. I'm a television street, personality. I don't know about people driving down the street to pick up metal. I've never had somebody drive down the street and say, I'm looking for metal. They don't even come down my street and ask if I want sharp knives. Michael Attar has accused his former clients, Mary and Michael Rhodes, of refusing to pay for demolition work. Mary and Michael claim he never finished the job and stole their property. Now, what did you rent? A skip loader. That's different from a bobcat? Yes, that's correct. Smaller? I would say bigger. Bigger. And do you remember how much it cost you? Uh... Did you rent it from Home Depot? No, no, no. It's from a local rental yard. I think it was um, All the equipment we in Ontario. $1,300. Yeah. Find it. Yeah. I Find the bill. They didn't print it, so now I gotta... How many days did you have it, Mr. Rhodes? Four. I'm dismissing your counterclaim, Mrs. Rhodes. Do you want to know why? Because I asked him a specific question, and you answered. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yeah. That part of your counterclaim, because you don't have it, you can't find it. So, so far, you owe him $4,500. Not $8,600, but $4,500. Now, do you have any proof that Mr. Attar or someone from his team stole copper piping or whatever piping that you claim is missing? Do you have any proof that either Mr. Attar or anyone under his authority took property from you? Yes. We have text messages back and forth. Okay, I'll read them. Okay, so what you're referring to with regard to the stolen property is you send a picture and there's a little piece of pipe there, one piece of pipe, and mm -hmm. you say, Mike, did you or you guys happen to grind off two metal poles and concrete blocks? The kids use those for volleyball nets. And he says, oh, my God, no, sir, but I'm guessing the person whom I gave my medal to, no problem, Michael, please give and... I don't see the rest of this message. Yes, so the, that was the beginning of things we noticed that were missing. Oh, I don't care. And if, then, if this is what you're talking but about? He yes, he's saying he let a metal person onto our yard, okay. and they went and took everything that was metal. Okay. Okay, now, Mr. Rattar. Yes, Your Honor. I want you to tell me about the missing metal on this property. She was standing right there, and I had there was a metal guy no, no. down the street. And you know how they pick up metal? No, I don't know that, sir. I'm a television personality. I don't know about people driving down the street to pick up metal. I've never had somebody drive down the street and say, I'm looking for metal. They don't even come down my street and ask if I want sharp knives. Okay. Do you understand? Very much, Do you understand? Very much, Your Okay. Honor. Who is this person? This person was picking up metal. And Just I asked for permission. I said, ma'am, could you come down the property? Just a second. Yes, ma'am. Was this person picking up metal for nothing? Yes, Just a second. Yeah. You're a business guy, Mr. Rattar. Somebody drives down the street and says, you know, I see you're doing construction. Is there yes. any metal around here yes. that you want me to dispose of? Yes, ma'am. They do love. Yes. And then they look around. This is what you're telling. They look around yes. and they take the metal for nothing. Yes, ma'am. It's to be cheaper for me 
set her loaded on my trailer and take it to the recycling metal yard. The so recycling. what metal did they take, sir? I assume everything you that I gave him. What did right you give there. them? Nobody went up there and cut no poles, ma'am. Well, they sent you a picture of a pole, sir. And in response to the picture of pole, you said, oh, my God, I'm guessing the person whom I gave my medal to. I'm guessing. No problem. And then you say later, tell me what it is, and I will either look high and low to get it back or replace it. That's what you say. Yes, I offered to replace That's it. That's what you say. I offered okay. to replace it. Now, Next question. I need an itemized list of what the value was of the metal taken. I have to no, know there's a list of everything. They're listed in there. What is this? Those are all the damages, but the metal is listed in there separately of the items that are missing. No, it isn't. This is a whole bunch of other things that you prepared right, for this case. It's in there they underneath. Could... The, there's the horse feeder. Part of the corral I, was cut well, off. This is something that you wrote yourself. Yes, you said an the, itemized this isn't list. The, if they took six feet of pipe, get me a bill from Home Depot for the replacement of that pipe. Oh, I have all the bills for the replacement of metal, not what you prepared for this litigation. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Itemized list. Did you take down a horse corral? No, Your Honor, I did not take down a horse corral. I have nothing horse to corral, do. is that metal or is it? It's made out of galvanized metal, yeah. They cut pieces off of that that were sticking up to take to recycle, I guess. Just a second. Was there a four-sided horse corral? Yes. That looked like this? Yes. That they took down? They cut pieces that were sticking up above uh, the horse corral, on. attached you're being, to the horse corral? You're being petty. You're being petty. $306, Rams price, galvanized wall-mounted horse feeder. Did you take a horse no, feeder? No, Your Honor, I got no other Yo, Mr. Ritoff, $4,500. Judgment for the plaintiff. Counter claims you. dismissed. We're finished. This court is adjourned. Well, he, his equipment broke, and he wanted us to rent the equipment for him. The equipment died because things break down. And, and then the next day, he calls and says he's, he can't finish it. At that moment, I didn't have a credit card to my, to my name. And that's the honest truth. So we pretty much figured that was job abandonment at that point. I'm going to have a written contract in the future. Don't hire <laughs> Always him. hire a professional. I could not believe that your first question to him when he said that he'd been working as a contractor for 14 years was, and you've been working all 14 of those years unlicensed? Oh, yeah. I was waiting for the yeah. question. I was yeah. waiting at the edge Different of my seat minds. and it never came. Different minds. <laughs> yeah. Should have slipped me a note. I should have. You should have <laughs> slipped me a note. No, that actually didn't cross my mind, but that's a good question. He's yeah. Oral contracts and no license. Since, and no license. But there's no question. He did the work. Yeah. No, I he agree. He did the work, and they were really dickering over the who was going to absorb the cost of this second bobcat that they had to get, which was really ridiculous. If they had had another contractor who came and completed the job. You would have you know, awarded that. I would have deducted it from the $4,500 that they owed him, but absent that, the fact that he rented some sort of piece of equipment and came and cleaned up yeah. the property was not important to me, and the rest of their case was nonsense. Next time, they won't employ somebody for $11,000 from a up. card <laughs> from your windshield. At Home Depot. <laughs> from... You know, from Anywhere. wherever, and not say, okay, listen, maybe I'll give him a shot. Give me three of your last references yeah. to call. It's a good lesson to people out there. I don't, though, I, don't, work. I don't understand that. Yeah. Is suing her ex boyfriend, James Stewart, for travel costs and a loan. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2102, Peterson versus Stewart. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Peterson, you and Mr. Stewart met online? Yes. You met Mr. Stewart, and according to your complaint, a romance developed, and there are two things that you believe, now that the romance is over, that he owes you. One of them is a loan that you made to him for $1,000. Now, Mr. Stewart does not deny that you gave him $1,000, correct? No, ma'am. Your defense is that it was a gift. Correct. And not made as a loan. Okay. On what date did you and Miss Peterson start to date? Uh, we never dated. Uh, we actually wasn't through no dating site. Just uh, somehow, coincidence, we came through. Did you see her? I met her once in person. When? 
when she paid for a hotel for my birthday. Give me the date. Uh, January 30th. Of this year? Yes, ma'am. So you met for the first time in January of 2022. Tell me about the $1,000. If you're playing with your papers, you're not going to hear where we're going. Okay. The $1,000 at that time, I was, I was been struggling with heart disease, which I, I just got out the hospital for having a, a heart surgery last Friday. So financially, my dealership was a little bit under the burden, so I asked her if she would help me. And when did you ask her? Was that in January? No, ma'am. That, that's a couple months later. All right, so that would be in March. Yeah. And it's the only time that you ever met her was in January. I met her once, other than that, when she gave me the money. Other than that, it was just normally her texting me, how you doing, do you want to meet up? Okay. So you met personally twice. Correct. And after January, you didn't see each other personally just by messages, and that's when you asked her for money. And you were going to tell me... Why in March you asked her for money? I understand that you just recently came out of the hospital, and while I'm happy to see you looking well and healthy, it's Thank really you. irrelevant to this case. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so why did you ask her for $1,000? Because she offered to help me. No, no, no. Nobody offers to help you unless they know that you need help. Oh, it's in writing. No, nobody offers to help you I'm, unless yes, you ma'am. let them know that you need help. I was kind of life coaching her. We both was going back and forth. We had an open line of communication, so I kind of got comfortable to ask. So I see what you're got saying. Got comfortable to ask? She already gave me money before that 1000 That's why I was comfortable. Just a second. I'm talking about the loan. Mm-hmm. I want you to tell me, since you acknowledge okay. that she gave you the money, tell me why you needed it. Well, I needed it because... I paid for the trip, which was twenty-one eighty, which she gave me two thousand plus one hundred and sixty more dollars for luggage. Came to just shy of twenty-four hundred dollars. I don't so understand she, what you're talking about. Well, she's already came to me and gave me money for us to take this little trip together. What does that have to do with this thousand dollars? That's not what I'm talking about. Are because you... she was supposed to come and reimburse some of the money because I paid already into the trip. So I was asking her for money. Am I crazy? Did he start to talk about his? Business needing money. He has a used car business. Yes. Really, before you come on a program like this, you should really watch so that you would know that one of my favorite sayings is, if you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory, especially if you're smart. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not so smart, and within three minutes you tell two different stories, that, Mr. Stewart, is a phrase that you should learn to live by. If you tell the truth, you don't need a good memory. That's not correct, Your Honor. Well, that's only because you wouldn't know the truth because you have, to have been introduced to the truth. He says, the $1,000 at that time, I was struggling with heart disease, which I just got out of the hospital for having a heart surgery last Friday. So actually, my dealership is a little bit under the burden, so I asked her that's if she right. would help me. So you remember saying that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that's different from she was paying me back. You just have to acknowledge that it's yes, different. Ma'am. Okay. And let me tell you what you swore to in your answer. She offered to help me catch up on my child support. On a phone conversation, yes. I just asked you one simple question, sir. You acknowledged she gave you $1,000. What was it for? So now I have three reasons. One, your car dealership was a little bit of a burden. Two, she was returning your money to you. And three, you were catching up on your child support. Those are the three things that I have in front of me. Yes, ma'am. Is it door number one, door number two, or door number three? Whichever one you would like, ma'am. So, so far, it's $1,000 for the plaintiff. Now, whether it was for school or whether it was for your children's support, she's not responsible for your children's support. You're responsible for your children's support. Have you ever met his children? No. She doesn't even know your children. No. Do you have a child support order? No, she asked me to marry her. Just though. a sec. I asked you a question, yes, not ma'am. her. Do you have children? The answer is yes. Yes, I have children. Yes, ma'am. Yes. This is not a dance. No, I'm just. This saying. is not a dance. Yes, ma'am. You lead, I lead. You, I always lead. Yes, ma'am. Later. You had some trouble with your finances, and you had serious debt. What kind of work do you do? I am a credit collections agent. Not a good thing when you're a credit collections agent. Joy Peterson claims her ex-boyfriend, James Stewart, owes for travel costs and a loan. Now, the children do not live with you. They're above age. Yes, ma'am. 
when you swore in your answer that you had gotten behind in your child support order, what child support order was that? It's the last child because I got behind because I was out of work. So they're above age, but I owe a little arrears. Okay, so that's the child support that you were behind. Had you been noticed to come to court on those arrears? I've never been in contempt, no, ma'am. I've always kept a good standings with them. Okay, but you're behind now. Yes, ma'am. You were behind then in March. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you knew you were behind because? I was on bed rest for five months due to a knee surgery and some heart issues. Uh, okay, did you request that your child support order that was on arrears only be stayed while you weren't working? I got a new caseworker who wasn't willing to work with me at that time. So. Okay, so that was difficult. Your caseworker yes. who was involved in this child support yes. order. Uh, that sounds better. Right. And the child support order was in favor of the state? I don't owe the state no money. I paid all fees off with them. I just owe the back child support. To the mother of the children? Yes. Okay, $1,000. Now, I'm going to come to you. According to you, you gave the defendant $2,000 to buy travel tickets for you. Yes, Your Honor. When? I gave him money in March. At the same time that you gave him the $1,000? No, ma'am. That, that was in April. Show me proof of that. And I want to see $2,000 taken out from someplace for him to pay for these tickets. And they were tickets for you to go from where you live, which is where? Springfield, Ohio. To Miami? Yes, ma'am. The $2,000 was in March. What were you going to do in March? In March, I gave him the $2,000 to purchase tickets because I asked him, can you get discounts for us to go to Miami because I was going to have surgery. So he told me yes. Sure, so I gave him the $2,000 for that. That's not then he said, well, that's going to be more than that. I said, well, that's all I have for the tickets for me and my daughters. He said he wanted to go, so he was planning on going. Mr. Stewart. Yes, ma'am. On what date did she give you the $2,000 to buy the tickets? It was early March. She continued. Yeah, March, looks like March 25th. She gave you $2,000. And yes. when were you supposed to go to Miami? We, we were supposed to go July 4th, and she... Okay, just a sec. You were supposed to go in July. So you're talking about four months later. Yeah, she canceled the trip. Oh, okay. When did she cancel the trip? Uh, she canceled the trip about a month l later. So she canceled the trip in April? Yeah, and it was a third party, so it's non-refundable. I don't know that at all. Yes, ma'am. Now, just a second. So you're going to have to show me. I didn't borrow it. You borrowed the $1,000. I didn't say you borrowed this $2,000. She gave you money for a specific purpose. Right, she went... Don't speak. She gave you money for a specific purpose to purchase airline tickets. For us. Which you... I don't give a rat's behind for who. She gave you money to purchase... As I did. ...airline tickets. As I did. This is not a dance. No, I'm just This is not... You lead, I lead, you... I always lead. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. I always lead. Yes, ma'am. She gave you $2,000 to buy tickets that you acknowledge. The trip was canceled three months before the trip. Now... You say they were non-refundable tickets. Yes, ma'am. Show me. We, we... I just want to see where you tried to get either a refund or a credit three it's months and I don't speak. You mm -hmm. have to show me because you just said the tickets were non-refundable tickets and I could neither get money back for them when she canceled it or a credit. And I said... In all that paperwork, show me. It's just public knowledge on their website. I apologize, I do not have it. It's not public knowledge on any website. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,000. $1,000 alone, $2,000 for the tickets. We're finished here. Thank you very much. Well, out! This court is out! Girl. She wanted to go on a vacation. Taking advantage of me. She was being a little aggressive. Don't even look that way. <laughs> now, hopefully, we can just move on with our lives. I think we should print that on cards to hand out to people as they leave here. If you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> that defendant in the first 15 seconds told three different stories about the same thousand dollars. Reminded me of a toddler when you ask if they had cookies and it's all over their mouth and they say, no, I didn't have chocolate. I didn't have candy. <laughs> 15 seconds, three different stories. So if you tell the truth, you don't need a good memory. Not at all. Case 2158. Smith versus Crosley. All parties, please step forward. Justin Smith is suing his ex-girlfriend, Jessica Crosley, for an unpaid loan. 
Ms. Crossley, I'm going to start with you. You and Mr. Smith were in a romantic relationship for a period of time. Yes. From when to when? I want to say it was about a year before my son was born. My son was born February 11th, 2019, and our relationship ended about four or five months after he was born. And after you separated, according to what I read, you sort of remained friends. Yes. Great. You had some trouble with your finances, and you had serious debt. What kind of work do you do? I am a credit collections agent. Not a good thing when you're a credit collections agent. And this was after you had already been separated for a long period of time. And at some point, what I'm piecing together is you discussed your financial circumstances with Mr. Smith. Yes. And one of your options was to seek protection in bankruptcy. Correct. And Mr. Smith thought that that was a bad idea. Yes. So he suggested that you take out a loan consolidate all this debt, which was on, I assume, on credit cards with very high interest. And since he had credit, he would take out the loan and you would pay th that loan off, which was manageable every month. Is that generally what this is about? Yes. yes. His behavior had started getting irrational, scary, started calling me a lot, asking my whereabouts, texting me, driving by my house on several occasions I saw. I'm still not understanding why you stopped paying on the loan. Justin Smith claims his ex-girlfriend, Jessica Crosley, owes for an unpaid loan. Mr. Smith did take out that loan month and year. March of 2022, this year. What were the payments each month, starting in March or April, principal and interest? He had told me there was 500. Told you they were 500. He took out that loan, and am I correct, Ms. Crosley, that you paid off your credit card debt? Yes. And you paid off your debt with the loan that he took out? Yes. And you did, in fact, create a situation where the money, because you were employed, would come out directly from your bank account to go to pay off the loan to his bank account. Yes. And you did that in what month? That was started, I believe, at the end of April or beginning of May. And how many such payments did you make? Biweekly payments, I believe I made about six. Thereby acknowledging that this was a loan. At some point, you stopped making the payments. What month did you stop making the payments? In July of this year. Why? So I had started seeing my current boyfriend. This is not a social show. Just tell me why. So I had to take a day off of work to file for an order of protection. Why did you have to take a day off from work to file for an order of protection? Because I was uh, advised to by a police officer, I suppose. Okay. To. And I assume against him. Yes. Okay, give uh, me the incident. Okay, so in July, when I started seeing my current boyfriend, Justin had expressed that he wanted us to get back together, and I had told him, no, that was not going to happen. And then his behavior had started getting irrational, scary, started calling me a lot, asking my whereabouts, texting me, driving by my house on several occasions I saw. And then there was an incident on July 19th where I had allowed his mother to take my son to a play, um, and she was supposed to drop him off back to me. And instead of dropping him back off to me, she had dropped him off with his father at his work. And then I got a call from Justin yelling, saying, where are you? What are you doing right now? And I'm like, well, I'm on my way back home. Your mom's supposed to drop off Brayden. He's like, I have Brayden. I'll meet you at your house. So I said, okay. We got to outside my house, and then he... Uh, pulled up next to me and then started screaming out of the car, like, where were you? What were you doing? I was like, I was spending time with Anthony, my boyfriend. And he's like, I'm taking Brayden. I'm not going to give him back to you. And my son's crying in the back seat. And I said, no, you give him back to me. It is my day to have him. And he drove away. He later called me and said I could meet them at Dairy Queen. So I met them there. I got out of the car. I went up to my son, and as I was getting him in the car, Justin had walked up to my car and started yelling and swearing at me. And as me and my son started driving off, he threw a milkshake at my car, which scared me and my son very much. Okay, good. And you filed for an order of protection. You had a trial on the order of protection, yes. and the judge dismissed your order of protection. Yes. After the trial. 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm still not understanding why you stopped paying on the loan. So when I had lost my job... You lost your job when? The next day. The incident happened on the 19th. I had to take the 20th off to file for the order of protection. The 21st, I was let go. Oh, that had nothing to do with you being let go. Nothing. I just want to know why you stopped paying on the loan. You stopped paying on the loan because you lost your job. Are you working now? Yes, I just started working. Well, did you start paying him back? Uh, no. So why? in also in July, when all these incidents happened, Justin had stopped paying for daycare, which was our agreed upon child support payment. We don't have a court order for child support, but he had been paying all of daycare. I cover all of his other finances. So that was an agreement that you had, that he would pay for daycare? Yes. Okay. And he stopped paying in July? Yes. He started only paying half of daycare. Okay. So, well, let's go back. He started paying for half? Yes. How much was he supposed to pay per month? $560 would, was the full amount of daycare each month. Okay. And he had been paying that. In July, he cut it down to? To 270 I believe. 80 80 Okay. So he wasn't completely not paying. He was paying part of it. Correct. Tell me why you cut the payments in half, because you have a counterclaim for that. Yep. So um, in July, we started a custody case for full custody of our son. You're talking in July. Who started the custody case? I did, Your Honor. Okay. Did you retain a lawyer? I did. Is that case still ongoing? It is. Well, then, I'm not entertaining anything about the daycare, because you have that case in family court. The court there will make a determination as far as future child support and whether or not this daycare should have been paid. So you have no reason for not paying the loan. I was planning on filing bankruptcy. Okay, but you didn't. You didn't file for bankruptcy. You did the smart thing. How much is left on the loan? It's in excess of twelve or eleven thousand dollars. What interest rate is on that loan, by the uh, way? Thirty-six percent, I believe. Current balance as of November thirtieth, twelve thousand six hundred thirty-one dollars. How is a thirty percent loan better than her credit cards? She had some loans in excess of eight hundred percent. From whom? Or over five hundred percent. These were online lenders. Oh, wow. Okay. You have a counterclaim. Harassment. Daycare costs is out. Lost wages because you say you had to take a day off to file a protective order and you were fired? <laughs> Nonsense. Harassment. Let's hear it. And don't go back to anything that you told the judge during the hearing that you had where he dismissed your application for an order of protection. Okay. Well, that the order of protection... Okay. That, 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 that was... They're just... Shh. Well, if that's the testimony, it's already been adjudicated. A judge using the same measure of proof that I would use, dismissed your case. So I'm not relitigating that case. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $10,000. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I believe he was angry that I started a relationship with somebody. I think the restraining order was part of her defense as to why she didn't want to pay me back anymore. I was ready to file bankruptcy, and he had offered to take it out for me. You know, at the end of the day, um, the, the loan is still agreed upon and still needs to be rebated. I think that that's a good lesson that you can't use the court systems and restraining orders to get out of a loan that you have really no excuse for not paying except for you lost your job. And I just think it's tricky. I think that a lot of defendants come in here and think that they can just say, I didn't have the money and so I don't have to pay it. But that's not the case. What's most interesting to me is these 800% to 500% or 100% interest-bearing loans I know. It's something Where did that I've, come from? I, it's something I've seen recently in the past couple of years. It seems like every online shopping venue now has some form of loan payment or loan offering or sign up for our loan program. And I'd never seen that before. And if you don't read the fine print, you could get stuck in just... Kaloyan Papianchev is suing fellow motorist Spencer Gilbert for car damage. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2084, Papyachev versus Gilbert. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Papyachev, you were driving in your car, 2008 BMW. That's correct. And that was on the 14th of November of that is last year. Tell me what time of the day this accident happened. It was approximately 3.15 uh, p.m. So daylight hours? Yes. And tell me where you were going. I was going eastbound on Sunset Boulevard in Beverly Hills. I was driving... Eastbound on... Sunset Boulevard in Beverly Hills. I was driving in the, in the right, so-called slow lane, when I tried to make a right turn. Where? It's an intersection, the name of the uh, 
The street is Palm Drive. Is that intersection controlled by a light or stop sign? No, there is no stop sign or, or a light. At that intersection? That is correct. I assume somebody has a video or a photograph of that section that would demonstrate that there is do, no Your light. Honor. You do. Is there a light or a stop sign at that intersection? No, Your Honor, there's not. Did you put on your signal indicating a right turn? Yes, I did. How far from the corner? I can't stay distance, but it was approximately five seconds before I reached the intersection. Was there traffic that day? Yes. A lot? Very light. It was Sunday. So far, Mr. Gilbert, is that correct, that there was light traffic on that day? Yes, Your Honor. And you were traveling on a motor something called a Vespa. a Vespa, which is a small... Small scooter, yes, Your Honor. But motorized. Yes, ma'am. And does... I don't know about these things. Does a Vespa have to be registered and have a license plate on it? Uh, I do have a yours. license plate on the register. Okay, so your Vespa is registered as a motor vehicle and you have a license plate. Yes, Your Honor. Now tell me what happened, sir. As I proceeded to make a right turn uh, onto Palm Drive, I just heard uh, an airflow. Uh, it was a big bang. It was an impact. On your passenger side? On, yes, on my right passenger side. And I realized that there was, a, there was a small motorcycle or a motorped that hit my vehicle. Hit your side. And you were the person riding that Vespa? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. May I see the damage to your car? Yes. Sarah Rose. Get me the price of the 2008 BMW 7 Series. Will do. Thanks. What you're talking about is this damage, sir, is that correct? Yes, front passenger. I see. Yeah. I've just made a circle. Can you see the circle that I've made? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And that is, Mr. Gilbert, where you hit him with your Vespa. It's where he hit me with his car. No, he can't hit you sideways, sir. He, He's there. At me. he can't hit you sideways, sir. He can't slide into you. Mm. Now, whose ever fault this was, I'll try to figure it out. But you hit him because this is the area of impact. Cars don't go sideways, they go front. You have pictures of your Vespa? Yes. I'd like to take a look at them. Your Honor, based on a 100,000 mile BMW 7 Series, between $4,700. And 7800 is about the range. I just want to know, mm -hmm. because I have to see what this kind of day. He's suing for $10,000, which is ridiculous. That doesn't show me much, actually. OK, so I can't see the front of your Vespa, sir. I assume that the front is the end that's damaged, because I see the back. Yeah, the front okay. end was completely so, just collapsed. A second. So from the front the impact. of your Vespa was damaged because that's where you hit him with your Vespa. No, you're The not, back end correct. was not damaged, nor does it look like the sides are damaged. These are the pictures you gave me. The only thing I can't see is the front crushed end. Mm -hmm. Am I correct that I can't see the front crushed end? Okay. Yes. So now I'm telling you that based upon these photographs, yours and his, you hit his car. Okay. Now. That's the chart. Mm -hmm. Whose chart is that? It's from the police report. Great. Now, the police report doesn't show a bike lane there or any other lane. Mm -hmm. It shows that there's a car traveling in a car lane, <laughs> and the Vespa hitting. See, he can't hit. You can hit. He can't hit you. Now, tell me, sir, why is it that you were driving where you were? You were behind him initially. No, Your Honor. I was traveling eastbound, down Sunset, heading to work. He was right next to me. When we got to Palm, he turned into me, pushed me. I barely was able to keep control of my vehicle. Is or... what you're telling me that your Vespa was never behind his? This you're not getting. I want you to get this right out of your mind. Your whole car isn't worth $10,000. Let's be serious. I don't have all day. Do you have a bill? And later today. And I know you're dying to tell me that there was noise there, that you couldn't live there, that it was terrible. Well, that's what happens when you live in a place with a whole bunch of other people. Kaloyan Papianchev. 
claims fellow motorist Spencer Gilbert owes for car damage after hitting him with his Vespa. Is what you're telling me that your Vespa was never behind his? No. I was never okay. behind his vehicle. Do we have any other video? I do have a dash camera video of the... Uh, May I see it, please? Play it again, please. Start from the beginning. So, let's go slowly. Okay. Well, it's clear to me, Mr. Gilbert, that you came up behind him. Just go back a little bit. You weren't right next to him, because... I was next to him because as he slows down to make his turn, that's when he makes contact with me. I was right next to him the entire time. Impossible. May I see the police report, please? Yes. There is actually two police reports. May I they... see them? Has anybody given a summons on that day? Nobody. Neither party was given a summons. Is that correct? Not that I know of, Your Honor. Okay. So this is the narrative after witnesses were questioned and the opinion based upon the witness's testimony and yours and the fact that the police officer actually heard in the video the clicking of the turn signal indicating a right turn approximately five seconds before the right turn was executed according to the police officer as a result of viewing the cam that he had, the video, that he was making a slow right turn. He had turned on his signal approximately five seconds before, and you were coming up on him on your right and it says, based upon the video footage, I determined that the first car, and that would be his, should not have been placed at fault for this collision because he activated his turn signal and made a safe turn to go southbound on Park Drive. The fault of the collision is on the part of Mr. Gilbert for violating 21755 CVC, which states in part that the driver of a vehicle may overtake and pass another vehicle on the right only under conditions permitting that movement safely. I'm reading you the police report. Do you have another police report? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Prior to this or after this one? This is the only police report that I know of. Oh. I wasn't aware there was two. Well, this was a supplementary police report. What is the date of yours? All I have is what my lawyers gave me. Oh, well, I'm going to show you this one, sir. Yes, ma'am. And this one was after viewing the cam. Yes, Your Honor, my police report predates his. Predates it. Well, that's after the officers looked at the dash cam, heard the signal, and saw you coming up from behind. I'll take it back now. I've seen the damage on your car, sir. Yes. Which, while I wouldn't like to have it on my car that's 14 years old, it is on your car, it's not worth $10,000. Your whole car isn't worth $10,000, sir. So if you want to show me a reasonable estimate for fixing that, I'll be more than happy to look at yes, it. Yes, I do. And this uh, estimate was given to me by the only body shop that is authorized by BMW. I'll find another body shop for a 14-year-old car. I'm certainly not going to consider giving you anything near the value of your total car for something that is on the door of one side of the car. Have you had the car fixed, sir? I had the, uh, the entire door replaced, but it's still... Replaced by whom? Uh, by a body shop. Good. Yeah. And if you had the whole door replaced, you must have a bill. This you're not getting. I want you to get this right out of your mind. Your whole car isn't worth $10,000. Let's be serious. I don't have all day. Do you have a bill for the door that you replaced from a body shop, which is what I said a moment ago? No, I do not. Have well, it with me. The vehicle is still do paint and uh, dents and scratches. They, repair. Well, they're going to fix the car, and if they can fix the car for two thousand dollars, have it fixed. That's my judgment. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. This court is adjourned. Certainly not happy about it. I am happy. It is something. The problems that this 
gentleman's caused my life. It happened in about two seconds. I was like riding right next to the dude and he just turned into me and I went into the wall and that was pretty much it. I had to call 911 immediately because I wasn't sure if he's dead. Because of what he did, I wasn't able to go to work for two weeks. I lost two of my jobs. First thing to do is you call 911 and then deal with, you know, the rest of the circumstances. One theme that we see far too often is plaintiffs coming here or to any court asking for a large sum of money, in this case $10,000 for a car that wasn't even worth $6,000. And instead of showing us an estimate of fairy tale land of what was going to fix it, show me a receipt for what you paid to fix the damage. Yeah, he, didn't, he did didn't fix have the it. damage. He fixed the damage already, replaced the whole door. You don't have a receipt for that, you don't have a, a bill, you don't have a, a nothing, yeah. which leads me to believe that it was a lot less, less expensive than $10,000. So I thought your judgment was generous, given that he had no proof. I would have said goodbye. Well, he did damage the car. Not that I'm going into history, but as one who has, on occasion, hit a stationary <laughs> object, even, even allegedly hit a stationary <laughs> object, even and get a little nick on mm -hmm. a bumper on a car. It's expensive to fix a car. So he had a car that looked in perfect condition. It wasn't after it was hit. He's entitled to have it look like what it looked like before. I just felt there was sort of a bait and switch with a $10,000 estimate, yeah, but I already I looked, got it I'm replaced. Fixed. I think that he said that. I think that he said that unintentionally. I also Sarah. think he did. <laughs> it's okay. Won't get one over on us. No. Case 2090, Oquendo versus Vila Rio. All parties, please step forward. Amber Oquendo is suing her former tenant, Nancy Villarreal, for unpaid rent. Ms. Oquendo, you own a home? Yes. How large is the home? It's four bedroom, two bath, and like a, approximately 1,700 square feet. When did you purchase the home? 2018. Can I ask you what the cost was? 225000 And you live there in the house, just you, with whom? I don't live in that house. That's my rental. You bought it as a rental? Somebody was playing their music loud. Mm -hmm. It was a problem for you. Yes. You asked them to be quiet. Yes, you sure. told her it was a problem. Yes. And then there was some sort of a kerfuffle. I don't know what happened. You want to tell me? Amber Oquendo claims her former tenant, Nancy Villarreal, owes for unpaid rent. Nancy is countersuing for her security deposit. Now, you bought it as a rental? You bought it as a business? Originally, I purchased it, and I lived in one room. My kids shared a room, and I rented two rooms until I was able to establish a, basically a history of being a landlord. And I then purchased another home, and I live in my own residence, and that one is fully a rental as of now. And also a resident of that home are your parents? Yes, they are in the master. And you have another tenant there. Yes, there are a few other tenants. Tell me who. So I have one tenant who uh, has asked not to be identified by name, but he is in one room that I have marked as room number two. And then I have another tenant who's in room number three. And then Nancy was in room four, and there's now a new tenant in that room. OK, this is what it's about. The defendant was a tenant of yours. It didn't work out. And it was a short tenancy. I think it lasted no more than a month. Yeah, right. Is that right, June of this year? Yes, Your Honor. It didn't work out. She left. It is your claim that she left owing you a month's rent. And I assume from your paperwork that the month's rent was $774. So it was $650, and then the $774, or the remaining difference was just for uh, being served and then court costs. But month rent was six. Six. Six fifty. And when the defendant moved in in the beginning of June, did she sign a lease? Yes, and I'm just going to correct you. Sorry, she moved in on May seventh, so just wanted to correct that. But yes, she, she did sign a lease. May I see it, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. You have a copy of your lease, Miss Villarreal? Yes, I do. Okay, good. So it's a month-to-month -month tenancy. It's an at-will with thirty days written notice. Okay. According to the lease, there was a security deposit of $650. Yes, ma'am. Did the defendant pay that when she moved in? Yes, she did. Okay, because that's your counterclaim. You say you want your security deposit back. Yes, ma'am. I assume from reading both of your complaint and answer that this turned out to be not a happy tenancy. You don't live there on a full-time basis. The defendant did live there for a short period of time. You moved in, rented a room, and you gave her $650, and you moved in on May 7th. 
Yes, Your Honor. Correct. And you moved out on what date? I moved out on July the 7th, the July the 10th. So you were there for two months? No, I was there for one month. May to June, June, July. May 7th. I moved in in, I believe it was June because I moved out July the 7th. Our lease was signed on May 7th, so I know that. Yes, the term of the lease is beginning May 7th. That's the term of the lease, according to this. So I don't care when you moved in. Okay. The term of the lease was May 7th on a month-to-month -month basis. So you were there from May 7th to July 10th. So you were there for two months. Okay. We're going to get into the whys, wherefores in a moment, but did you pay the month of May? Yes, Your Honor. Did you pay the month of yes, May? Yes, ma'am. Good. Did you pay the month of June? No, Your Honor. Okay. And you lived there until July 7th? No, I actually lived there until... You just told me July 10th, as a matter of fact. Whitney's going to tell me what date you gave as your move-out date. You said it was July 10th. She said, I moved out on July the 10th. Okay, July, and it was, yes, July So you 10th. were there for two months? Yes, 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 Your Honor. Okay, if you were there for two months and you only paid one month's rent. Yes. So, so far, you owe her one month's rent. Did you return her security deposit? Yes. Did you receive your security deposit? Yes, Your Honor. How much? Uh, $650. Okay, so you have no counterclaim. The counterclaim um, is for your security deposit. The rest of it is nonsense. You moved out, you wanted to play your moving costs, your hotel fees, and everything else. That's ridiculous. Okay. So if you've received your security deposit now, what you owe her is a month's rent, which is $650. And I know you're dying to tell me that there was noise there, that you couldn't live there, that it was terrible. Well, that's what happens when you live in a place with a whole bunch of other people. Did you look at this room before you moved in? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Okay, so you went to the house. Mm -hmm. When you went to, to mm -hmm. see the house, Amber was there. Mm -hmm. She introduced herself as the landlord. That's yes. what it says here. Yes. And she let you know mm -hmm. that she wasn't in the house, that her parents right. were in the house. And as tenants, but she wasn't in the house. Yes. And you moved in and somebody was making noise. Somebody was playing their music loud. Mm -hmm. It was a problem for you. Yes. You asked them to be quiet. Yes, you Your told Honor. her it was a problem. Yes. And then there was some sort of a kerfuffle. I don't know what happened. You want to tell me? Yes, Your Honor. I am a federal employee, Your Honor. And when I signed this lease back in uh, May, it states there, and I'm also uh, in recovery, Your Honor, and it states very clearly in the lease that there is absolutely no smoking on the premises or no drugs on the premises, Your Honor. There was absolutely marijuana being smoked in the house. And right after I brought that to her attention, I there received a 30-day termination notice. Okay. Well, because I absolutely could not live in that house anymore with my job. I felt it was not a safe place for me. Where did you go? I had, I was Just a I second, you, just a second. Is that your son? This is my son. Okay. Does he live in the area? I know you called him and he came and helped you move. Yes, Correct? Who does he live with? My son. He yeah. rents a room with roommates. So he has roommates? Yes. Tell me where you went when you left. You didn't get a three-day notice to quit. You got a 30-day notice from her that she was not renewing the lease pursuant to this. Right. You chose to leave in three Absolutely. days. That was your choice. Because... You had 30 days to stay, and you had a month-to-month -month tenancy. Mm -hmm. Okay? You chose to leave. So where did you go? I uh, got a U-Haul. I didn't really have a place at the time to go, but my boy's grandmother offered her place to me, so I stayed there for a couple weeks. She said, you pay $180, I'll let you stay here for a couple weeks until I was able to find another place, Your Honor. And then you did? Yes, ma'am, I did. Great. Okay, so the security deposit you have, mm -hmm. and she doesn't have her month's rent, which is $650. Are we done here? Judging for the plaintiff for the amount of $650. We're finished. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I am not aware of anyone using marijuana in my house. There was marijuana being smoked in the house. My dad says that he's not smelling it, so I guess I can't really attest to the legitimacy of that. It was not a safe place for me to be. You know, some people don't realize, Sarah, that if you leave a premises that you have lived in, it's like going to a restaurant and ordering a steak, and then delivering the steak, you're taking a bite and say, you know, I really don't like that steak, and finishing it, and then telling the waiter you're not going to pay for the steak. I always say you ate the steak. If you're a tenant and you find the living conditions such that, you know, you find it untenable to live there, you have a prerogative of changing your residence, but you don't live there for two months and only pay for one and then make excuses because you ate. Autumn Burke is suing her former friend, Freya Brown, for vandalizing her car and an assault. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2186, Burke versus Brown. Thank you.
Ms. Burke, I understand that you and the defendant met when you were both in foster care. Yes. How old are you? 19. And how old were you, if I can ask you these questions, if you're uncomfortable, please let me know. How old were you when you went into foster care? 16, I believe. Were you originally placed in group homes? Yes, and uh, through Orangewood Foundation, as well as transitional housing programs. When did you start transitional housing from group homes? I started that when I was 17. Um, that was in 2021, where I was uh, roommates with Freya, and we lived there. Okay, and could you describe the facility where you were living? We were living um, in Tustin, an apartment complex where they rent out the rooms and they have uh, foster kids go in there and then they pay, well, they don't pay rent, but it's a transitional program to move up to the extended foster care transitional housing program for after you're 18. So it's better be, to be placed into this one. So it helps foundation towards the next one. Towards total independence? Yes. And how long did you stay in that facility? Until when? Like a few months after I turned 18, I got into the Costa Mesa transitional housing. Okay. From Costa Mesa, do you go into any other facility through the foster care system or are you then supposed to get a job and get on your own two feet? So this program, the independent living program, it's really hard for foster kids to get into. You have to be set up with all the requirements. And so... What kind of requirements are there? Academic requirements? Yeah, academic requirements, working, going to school, meeting with the manager that comes in every week. Yes. Were you going to school? Yes. What school were you going to? Golden West College. Are you still going to school? Yes, I currently um, am taking a break from this semester, but I'm still going to continue it. Are you working? Yes. And you're living on your own? I'm renting a room out in Irvine with two different roommates. And Ms. Brown, what about you? How long have you been in the foster care system and how old are you now? I've been in the foster care system since I was 13 years old. I am currently 19. Tell me where you're living. Right now, I live in a rented room in a house also in Irvine. Tell me what you're doing. Right now, I work in sales. I'm a sales associate. Is it a full-time job? It's part-time. I'm also in school. I go to Fullerton College, and I'm a biology major. Interesting. Are you good in science? I really liked science in high school, so, yeah. Well, you seem like two absolutely delightful ladies. I don't know why you got into this kerfuffle, but each one of you claim that you were assaulted by the other. You claim that Ms. Brown caused vandalism to your car. Ms. Brown says that you had her falsely arrested after this altercation, which seems to be an unhappy event over a guy. Over a guy. I mean, they're necessary evils, but over a guy. <laughs> So two lovely girls who probably weathered a lot of storms in your life to keep together that most 15, 16-year-olds don't have to do. How could two nice girls get into a kerfuffle over a guy? I have no idea. Go! Okay, so on September 2nd, near 10 p.m., I was cooking us dinner, and Freya is sitting at the counter, and then... While I'm cooking dinner, I get a call from my ex, and he's just... From your ex-boyfriend, not ex-husband. Oh, yes. <laughs> from your ex-boyfriend. Yes. Okay. And his name is... What's his first name? Uh, I would prefer... Let's call him... Cat. Cat, yeah. <laughs> so... You get Kat... a call from Cat. <laughs> do you know Cat? Personally, no, I do not know him. Have you ever met him? No, no, I have not. Okay. So now you get a call from Kat. And how long has he been your ex-boyfriend? Well, we just had a situation ship. Like, it was just off and on. But he just called me, and I just had him on the phone as speaker. And So you had him on speakerphone. You're cooking her dinner. She's sitting at the counter. Yeah, and he starts making flirtatious comments, like saying if I had any cute friends near around. And... I know, it doesn't sound right, but... It doesn't, um, no, it doesn't sound good, Miss Burke. Yeah, but that's just, like, I know him, and that's, like, a different story, but regardless, then So Freya... what was he... I want to know what he was saying. Well, you have just... to tell me, because she probably remembers what he was saying. I do. So mm -hmm. if you don't remember, I'll ask her. What did he say? He asked in general if I had any cute friends near me or any around, just saying if there was any happened. cute friends near me. So okay. That he... That's not what happened. Okay, so your ex-boyfriend calls you and asks you if you have any cute friends around. Yes. And you didn't just hang up on him? 
Well, yes. I, well, I told him, I said that I can't, like, see him tonight and that he shouldn't be saying that. But the call ended because he had to go because he, <laughs> he had to go back to work. So it ended quick. Wait just a second. He must have said something that annoyed her. That was it. He just asked what did he I had... Okay. You don't remember. What did he say? He called her. They were talking for a minute. And then she was saying, you know, oh, I miss you, this and that. And he was like, can I come over? At which point she told him, oh, I'm with my two friends. And he was like, oh, what do they look like? Are they cute? How old are they? Which I thought was disrespectful to me and also disrespectful to her. I was trying to be a good friend. I informed her of it. And... No. So he was acting Just like a be... guy. Yeah. You know. Yes. Think before you talk. There's no filter here. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, oh, really? You can't come over? You have two friends? Ah, are they cute? Are they nice looking? And just to tell you, Miss Brown, I don't think it was disrespectful. I just think it's a stupid remark. No, I... Do you, know, I, do you understand? I understand, it's but just the, stupid. the tone and then the content... Because I... It was on speaker. Like, I could hear everything, so... So when he hung up, what did you say to her? After they hung up, I didn't say anything to her. She said to me... She was like, you don't know him. You know, like, we're in love. And you said to her? basically saying, I don't know him. So I was like, yes, you're completely right. I don't know him, but I don't want to hang out with him, basically, is what I told her. Well, was he coming over? No, 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 no I was no, just no. telling her. Okay. Like, and what's your asked. version? After he hung up, let me hear your version of what she said. OK, so after I hung up, it was just practically some of what she said, but it was more in an aggressive way and with a lot of attitude and... I, 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 show me. Uh, I get done with the phone and I'm cooking and then she wants to like humble under her breath and like say like I don't know just rude things about the call and like just looking at me weird and I'm like what's the problem and I was just... Okay, so she's looking at you weird and you say what's the problem and she says I don't know. She was going off and about, and then she started throwing trash on my counter and then That's threw it at me. Your Honor. Yeah, you did. That is no, true. No, I have yeah. to tell you something. So far, it makes sense. But then I don't want you to tell me she just went from nothing disrespect to throwing food around the counter. That didn't happen. That did not. OK, so before she started throwing the trash on my counter, she was saying um, how that I had attitude, but I was telling her that I did not have attitude. I was trying to de-escalate the situation. By wait, she had attitude. Her. So far, we're not attitude. So far, she's mumbling. No, that's what you she said. You said under her breath. Yeah, and then so she, I don't know, she would, like, like I said, it was a snap of a finger. Like, I'd never seen her switch like that. And, you know, I was confused. And then after she threw the trash, I told her to grab your stuff and get out of my house. And so I gave her time. She went in my room, grabbed her stuff. I waited by the door. That's I had true. it wide open. And she's just cursing and yelling and just, like, That's just... True. I didn't want her in my house. And if I would have known she was like that... No, I no, 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 don't, have... let, let's not... I don't, don't go down any okay. tributaries. When you got out to the car, she had a brick in her hand. Was there any damage to the car? Yes, I have photos proof to the left driver's side. And there's a video as well of the neighbor's ring camera showing her vandalizing my car. OK, I'll see the video. Autumn Burke claims her former friend Freya Brown owes for vandalism and an assault. Freya is countersuing for an assault and filing a false police report. There's a piece that I'm missing from this story, but let's say they're following your timeline. It probably makes sense as you got into an argument. You said to her, you know, he's really not that way. He's really a nice guy, and I love him. We're And she said, well, somebody who really loves you doesn't say, I want to come over and hang out with your two good-looking friends. That could escalate into something that's angry. Your Honor. Well, the thing is, when she did mention those things, they weren't calm, as you expressed. Yes. They were... No, they weren't. Yes. They were very aggressive. They, they could have been not. aggressive, but that's... They were not. I, they could and have been I aggressive. I didn't see but... a reason why it should have been that way at all. Listen, I'm not saying I agree with you or not. But I'm saying that common sense dictates to me that if you're on the phone with somebody that you still like and that you're an on again, off again, and you can't come over today because I have two friends here. Oh, really? You have two friends? Maybe I'll come over and hang out with your two friends. She found that disrespectful. I actually find it disrespectful to you and disrespectful to him. You really have nothing to do with it, Miss Brown. Somebody else was being a schlemiel. No, no, I mean, I wasn't saying, like... Okay. 
Yeah. All right, so now you tell her to get out, open her things. She's out the door, and? Well, no, she's not out the door yet. So then I have the door wide open. She comes, and then we're still, like, argumenting, and I'm trying to get her out of my house. She pushes me, and then That's I go back true. into... Yes, it is. Shh. I go back into the door, and then she starts hitting on my arm, like, hitting me, so I'm, like, defending back, and it was just crazy. Like, I didn't realize I had the door wide open for her to get out, like, peacefully. And okay, so that she didn't pushes happen. you, she puts her hands on you, you put your hands on her, p pushing, pushing, and up until that point, there's a lot of maybe pushing, touching the arms, touching the hand, but nobody is injured. Is that a fair statement, standing at the door? Well, I got assaulted, because I have the pictures to show that my nail came off. Uh, and... No, I just, I'm asking you a question. Yes. Up until that time, did your nail come off during that time? Yes. Was it a real nail or a fake nail? Both. Both of my nails came off. Like, it on was the on same the... finger, you had a fake nail over your real, real nail. nail. And it both ripped off. OK, I have I'll take a look. OK, I see a black and blue mark here that's under here. Mm hmm Right? Yes. That's and this I'm is on your hand. Yes. What was this? From blocking her hitting me. What was she hitting you with? Just her hands. Like, it was, she was just like a cat fight. Like, she just went crazy. And so I was okay. defending her out, trying and... to get her out of my house. OK. Did you respond to her hitting you? Yes. Yes. I, I do you have any the... photographs? Yes, I do have I'd like to of... take a look. So I see a scratch above your eye mm -hmm. and a little bruise on this part of your hand. Is that what it is? Yes, on my wrist. And then there's a bruise on, is it this part of your elbow? My elbow, yes. OK, so now you're arguing with each other. You both get banged up a little bit. Now she's outside. Yes. And what did you do? You finally got her out the front door. Yes. So after a few minutes, she called me and said, warning, I'm at your car. So when I heard that, I called the cops immediately, and I asked them to come down because I think she's going to be vandalizing my car or God knows what. And then so when that happened, me and my witness, Jasmine, we walked down out of my house because I wanted to go see, like, if my car, like, what was going on. And so as I'm walking out, my car's parked over here. Um, Freya's over here. And so when I'm walking out, then I meet her right here, and she has a brick in her hand. And, sure. yeah, she had a brick in her hand the whole time until the cops came. And then they arrested her, and they asked me if I wanted to file for assault and vandalization, and I said right. yes. Okay. And... When you got out to the car, she had a brick in her hand. Was there any damage to the car? Yes, I have photos proof to the left driver's side. And there's a video as well of the neighbor's ring camera showing her vandalizing my car. Yeah, oh, let me see the damage <laughs> and then I'll see the video. Thank you. Okay, now I'll see the video. Okie dokie. That's where you were arrested, Miss Brown? Yes. Have you ever seen that video before? I have not. You have not? No. Okay. Can I see the estimates to the damage yes, to your car? Tell me when you bought this car. I Ms. bought Brown. this car on August 1st in 2022. It was my first car. I paid for it full, all by myself. You paid for it in cash? Oh, uh, yes, uh, and a check. Okay. How long had you been saving for the car? Oh, I've been saving for it for years. 
like a few years, ever since I've been working. How much did you pay for it? I paid a total of, I believe, 7,300 and something dollars. Okay. okay, so the estimate to fix the car is $3,777. Yes, ma'am. And the next thing is the price of the vehicle for which you paid $7,350. Yes. Well, not Miss Brown. One would say to you as a result of seeing that video, temper, 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 you may have a temper, you can't do what you did. Would you acknowledge that you can't do what you did? Yes, I acknowledge. Great. So that means that you have to take care of this problem. She hit me first, Your Honor. And we're not talking about hitting. I understand. I'm talking about vandalizing a car. She says the weapon was a knife. It was. And the knife was being held by you. Yes, that's you, So you defense. took... No, she said not in self-defense anymore, madam. It's not self-defense. She's out. She's away from you. Autumn Burke has accused her former friend, Freya Brown, of vandalism and assault. Freya claims Autumn threatened her with a knife and filed a false police report. Neither one of you were hospitalized as a result of this assault. You got a couple of black and blue marks. Two she girls also had threatened a fight, me with a knife. And it shouldn't, that shouldn't have happened. But now the fight is de-escalated, and you went outside and purposely vandalized her car in a very, very aggressive way. And all I'm saying to you is you understand that that was temper, temper, temper. You're not allowed to do that, and you have to pay for it. She also threatened me with a knife. She what? I didn't. Threatened me with a knife. Just a second. I didn't see that when you were out there by yourself picking up a brick, right? Yes. And that was a long video. I don't see her in that video at all. I just see you picking up the brick, not doing enough damage, picking it up, doing a little more damage, picking it up, going to another side of the car, picking it up, going to the front of the car. I don't see her there threatening you. She didn't threaten me at that point. Right. Clearly, when you left the house, that ugly confrontation had been de-escalated. It had not, actually. It, of course it was, because you were out there by yourself. You could have gone. And if it was an ugly confrontation, you go to the police station and you say, I left my license in my friend's car. We had a fight. Could you come back with me on a standby and get my license instead of using a brick to bash in her car? My circumstances were different from Autumn's. I would like to inform you of that. What were your different circumstances? Well, I was supposed to be moving in three days, which Autumn was aware of. So had I called the police and been like, oh, I need this help, then I would have jeopardized my housing. Oh, no, that's not true. Sorry. Sorry about that, Ms. Brown. If you called the police and merely said to them, I don't want to have an argument with her, that would not have jeopardized your getting no, into I, housing. I, Having this fight I'm and vandalizing fight. her car, that could prevent you from getting into that's housing. Got me I'm kicked referring out. I'm not, to that. Just, I'm just telling you. Calling the police is not an issue. Going outside and for a period of probably at least 60 seconds and moving from different parts of her car and hitting it with a brick and bending down and picking up the brick again, that would prevent you from getting into housing. I wasn't referring to the calling the police. I meant the fighting. Oh, I'm not talking about the fighting. Thirty-seven seventy-five. That's the cost of fixing the car. Now, the only other issue that you have on your counterclaim is for being falsely arrested. Yes. I would arrest you for that. Mm -hmm. You should be. Listen, if I came out of my house and found somebody bashing my property. I don't care if we had a long-standing feud. No, well, I have a long-standing feud with her. We had an argument. We had a fight, whatever. That is not the natural progression of having an altercation with an old friend going out and vandalizing her car. So your countersuit for being falsely arrested is dismissed. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,775. I'm going to be rightfully for losing my housing during that process because of that incident, because of the transitional housing program I was in, I got kicked out of it. And so I had 30 days. So I believe I should be getting for that as well. Because where's, the head it was the, where's the head of the Department of Social Services to testify before me that the reason you lost your housing, if in fact you did lose your housing, was because of this vandalism? You have a witness here to tell me that? I have the 30 days notice, if that counts. May? Oh, yes. I'll take a look. Oh, here it is. Yeah. 
This says letters to give you written 30-day notice to move out of the transitional housing program. You were involved in a verbal physical altercation which involved a weapon with another individual and resulted in the police being called on September 1st, 2022. When you entered the program, you were informed and signed paperwork and agreeing to our program rules and expectations. Who was it alleged that had the weapon? She had a knife. I bought oh, that self-defense. I dropped it right a, when I saw just you. Just a second. No, I didn't. Yeah, I just did. a second. No, but just a second. She says the weapon was a knife. It was. And the knife was being held by you. Yes, I you, So you defense. took... No, she said it's not in self-defense anymore, madam. It's not self-defense. She's out. She's away from you. Your choice is to call the police and wait. Your choice is not to pick up a knife, because so far, this altercation has been a lot of tussling between girls that shouldn't have happened, but so far, nothing involved a weapon. So you went outside with a knife. And according to the rules, you can't do that. And that was the reason that you lost your housing, because there's no other reason. It said it involved a weapon. And they listed the rules. Drugs, alcohol, assault, danger, making threats. Well, you have a knife that's threats, whatever. E 3775, fix your car. You're not allowed to do that to her car. That's a hissy fit. Figure out how to do it. Your counterclaims dismissed. You should have been arrested for vandalism. Goodbye. This court is adjourned. Well, I was in shock. I was like, wow, like, I, over no reason, over my ex calling me, like, come on, like, we're adults now. I'm gonna move on with my life and just go up from here and not down here where other people like to take me down to their level. I'm super thankful to have her handle my case today. She is a queen. You know what I was really impressed with with both of those girls, Sarah? You know, I know the foster care system, usually wherever it is, can be a brutal system to negotiate. And these two young women, at least on the surface, appear to have negotiated it in an orderly, mm -hmm. reasonable way. I mean, she's living on her own. Mm -hmm. She evidently worked for a very long time because she saved up and bought her own car. That's yeah, a lot a big of response. Deal. That's a big deal. It's and to, be, to even be able to figure out the system, which even as lawyers, sometimes we have a difficult time navigating things in the foster care system, to figure out this transitional program that better sets you up for the next step, that sets you up better for the next step. I respected that, that she took the time to figure out... Both the best of them. Po both, both. Actually, both. ...their best possible options for navigating the system that they were placed in. Both working. Yes. Both going to school to try to get themselves into a better circumstance. The defendant certainly is a biology major, yeah. which is fascinating <laughs> Not to me. Not our thing. Not our thing. Great for her. Uh, but clearly, bright young women who made it to a place at age 19 yeah. that's really terrific yeah. and supportive of each other because one had a license, mm -hmm. one didn't, so they were supporting each other. All very lovely. And get into a kerfuffle over nothing. It shows just how fast all that work and all that preparation for the can next step and for the housing can just can crumble. Un can just unravel. Really sad. That's sad. But they seem like two nice young women, and I think yeah. that they have a really... Both of them have a shot. Yeah, to make it back. Zachary Martin is suing his neighbor, Nancy Morell, for property damage after his car was vandalized. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2151, Martin versus Morrell. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Martin, you and the defendant are neighbors. Yes, ma'am. How long have you been neighbors? I uh, moved into the subdivision in 2019. That's how long you've been there? Yes, ma'am. Do you know how long the defendant has been there? I think 2014. Is that right? 2017, Your Honor. Oh, okay. And where do you live in respect to one another? You want to go over there and show um, me? I live in this house right here. Or I did. I don't need more. This house right here. And she lives right here. You sold your house? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and the defendant she li lives right here. Where the blue car is? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. This is sort of a circular area, and from the circular area, you pull into your driveway. Is that yes, right? Okay. It is your claim that the defendant keyed your car. Yes, ma'am. And when did this happen? Uh, January 22nd, 2022. The defendant says that she did not key your car. She has a counterclaim. She claims that she was falsely arrested and held overnight in jail. Uh, that is a lot. Oh, just a... Shh. Okay. 
That's her claim, that she was falsely arrested, that she spent a night in jail, she had to hire a lawyer, did hire a lawyer after her lawyer requested several adjournments. You were not, at least physically, in the courtroom at the time of the last adjournment, and the case was dismissed. So let's go back to prior to January 22nd. I assume that if you're alleging that the defendant keyed your car, that you have some negative history with each other. Uh, yes, ma'am. Starting when? Uh, there are so many. I mean, <laughs> um, it started out when we were in the subdivision. They were nice at the beginning, no issues. And then the kids started having her granddaughter lives with her. Okay, how old is your granddaughter? She's nine now. She was eight. Okay. They started out having some issues, as kids do. I mean, you know, that happened. You have a child of a similar age? Yes, ma'am. She's uh, 11 now. She was nine or 10 when okay. we lived there. And <clears throat> the two children had an issue? I mean, it, you know, kids argue. They, no, I understand that. I'm not going into who was right and who was wrong in the kids' argument. I don't really care. But when did that argument between the two children spill over to the neighbors? Well, I, I guess the final straw was Labor Day weekend of 21, the Sunday before the Labor Day. We came home late. Uh, it was about 7 o'clock. We were working. And we told Jillian we were getting home for a little bit, and she said, I want to swim in the pool. So, all right. Jillian is your 10-year-old. Yes, yes. Um, and, of course, she said, well, that's boring, Daddy. I want a friend to swim with me. So I said, okay, one friend. That's it, because your brother's going to watch you, and then we're leaving to go back to work. So she goes next door to Patrick's house, which is the next-door neighbor, and she asked Patrick to come over and go swimming. He comes over. At the time, I didn't know this. At the time... Just a at the time, the defendant's granddaughter was there. Yes. At Patrick's house. Yes. Got it. So your daughter went over and invited Patrick... Right. ...to come and swim. Right. And not... You had told her that she could have one friend in the right. pool. So Patrick left to come swimming, leaving your granddaughter alone. Well, she had to go home. She had to go home. Yes. She came home. Oh, just a second. OK. That's what happened. OK. You had a grandchild who had hurt feelings. I assume she had... She actually hurt... went over to go swimming. She thought she was invited to. You had a child with hurt feelings. And I went to ask what had happened. Okay. That's this big hoopla. Okay. Now, your grandchild comes home. I assume she was upset. Was she crying? Yes. Okay. And that was about what time? In the evening. I honestly can't remember. Okay. And when she came home crying, tell me what you did. Went out and, honey, what's wrong? What did you do? Are you okay? Yes, and, and she told you what she happened. She said, I went over to Jillian's. She invited us swimming. And when I got there, her dad said only one person could swim. Okay. So she came home. Okay, and what did you do next? That's not what happened. I talked to her, calmed her down, and I went over and said, hey. You know, just a sec. You walked from your house, where the blue car is... Yep, around the corner. Did you take your granddaughter with you? No, ma'am. Okay. She's lying. And what? Shh. If you do that again, All I'm right. just going to dismiss your case. Do you understand yes. that? And you know, I'm, it's yeah, easy. I got it. This isn't my case. It's your case. I know. So you walked alone to his house. Did you knock at the door? Did you go outside? I want you to tell me exactly what you did. I don't remember if I went to the front door or I went to where the pool is. And I do believe Mr. Martin was out there. Okay, so Mr. Martin was out there. And you said it in that kind of a calm tone? What happened to my granddaughter? Why is she crying? Well, she told you why she was crying when she was home. She told you she was crying because she went over there to swim, and Mr. Martin said you can only have one person swim with you. Which is totally just, you're... out of character. The children swim together all the time. You mean at Mr. Martin's pool? At Mr. Martin's pool, and if oh, they need another just, adult... Just a second. I go so with. they swim all the time in Mr. Mm -hmm. Martin's pool, so you wanted to know what happened on this occasion when he said only one person can swim. Yes. And you said it in just the same kind of conversational tone that I'm talking in, is my question. I was very calm at the beginning, yes. OK. And so you said to him what happened and what did he say to you? I don't remember exactly. It was to the effect of his son was going to watch them and he could only have one child so in the th pool. Right, that he wanted his son to have responsibility of only watching one other child other than his sister. Correct. All right, well, that sounds reasonable. And that's fine. In just a second. So how did... It escalated. He said, I only wanted one child in here. My son's going to watch the kids. We have to go back to work. And that should have been it. Why wasn't it? I don't know. So I walked back out and looked at the pathfinder, and that's what I discovered, the scratch across the back. 
bright white, so that indicates it's fresh. I told her while she was standing there, you're going to jail, I'm gonna call the police. Okay, now I'd like to see the video. Zachary Martin claims his neighbor, Nancy Morell, keyed his car and owes for the repairs. Nancy is countersuing for a false arrest and lawyer fees. Now let's get to your version of what happened. Okay, so you said only one child. Her granddaughter went home. Her granddaughter, who's a little girl, is upset. Why can't I go swimming too? I got that. And? This is a lie. Everything I, she I, told just, you is just, a lie. Just a second. She did not come just to my house. Just a second. She did not if, come to my house. If you say again it's a lie, I'm going to dismiss your case. Do you understand yes. that? Yes. I asked you what happened. She did not come to my house. Okay. Her daughter the, came to my house. Just a second. You mean her granddaughter's mother? Yes. I never talked to her. Before my daughter went over, I had gone over. She did not. Oh, no, no, just a second. Yeah. Now I don't believe you, Miss Morell. Now I don't believe you, madam. I watched your eyes. I just watched it. Now, uncross your arms. So, her daughter came over first. No, yes. I well, went over. Just, I don't want to hear you. She never came over. The daughter came over. She bypassed my front door and went to the side gate where the pool is. She told my son to go get me. To go get you. To go get me. I came out and she called me a jerk. You should let her swim in the pool. I just told my daughter, look, you can have one friend because your brother's watching you. It's not fair for him now to watch three kids. Just two, that's all. I told her, I said, look, I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I said she could have one friend and that's it. She proceeded to call me a jerk. She said some other choice words I'm not gonna repeat, in which case, I did cuss her out and told her to get off my property and not to come back again, anybody in her family, or I would file trespass charges. Okay, and that was on the Sunday before Labor Day? Yes, ma'am. And when did this incident happen with your car? Uh, January 22nd. After that incident on Labor Day weekend, did you have any other contact with the defendant? Yes. When? I think it was right after Jillian's birthday on in November the 21st. I think it was like a week, like December the 1st, I think. Um, and this is really sick, but it got to the situation where she would watch my kid. And every time my kid would go to Aubrey's house or Patrick's house, she would take toys, she would unpack her stuff. And I told her, I said, look, you can't play with her. So they would wait 10 or 15 minutes till she got unpacked and get all comfortable, having a good time. She would send her granddaughter over there. She had to pack her stuff up and come home. She would come home crying many times. So then it got to the point where Patrick, he would come over to our house. He'd be over to our house all the time. They would get on trampoline, play video games, Blah, blah, blah. So I was doing something one day and then the camera went off and I give me a load of my iPad. Here comes Nancy up my driveway. She knocks on the door and she says, can we play? And I said, no, you can't play. Get off of my property. File trespass charges if you come back. That okay. was, you know, the last time I interacted with her. Until okay. she keep it. Well, it's not my job to be judgmental in a social way, but I have to tell you, I would have handled it a little differently with her. She wasn't the one who behaved badly. I wouldn't visit her daughter's bad behavior on an eight-year-old. You know, there are kids who live right around the corner from each other, and it seems to me that the bad behavior of a parent or a grandparent shouldn't impact on a child. The right. granddaughter is a nice little girl. Well, I mean, if you say so, I mean... Is she? Well, she spread rumors about my daughter and said that, you know, she told Aubrey that my daughter stole some of her toys and that was a lie. Okay. All right, I mean, well, it sort of started to get nasty. Now let's yeah. get back to the keying of the car. So that happened in January. So yes. tell me about the January incident. Okay, so she got up January 22nd, it's a Saturday. She decided to walk her dog. She's walked her dog. Go over there, show me what you saw. Okay. So she decided to walk her dog, and so she walks up the sidewalk. Well, you didn't see that. No, not right here. No, you didn't see that. She, she when she gets about when, right here, which is Patrick's house, the mailbox is right here, you can see in the video, that's when the cameras detect motion. That's when I get the alert. So I see her walking the dog, and she's walked her dog past my house many times, but never gotten that close to my vehicle. So immediately I thought something. Where was your car? My car is parked right here. In the driveway? Yes, ma'am. So she walks the dogs, and she is right beside the view. I mean, you can see in the video, you can see her right hand go up. So I immediately run out of the house. I have a truck parked right here. I looked at my truck. I thought maybe she did something to the truck. I looked at it, didn't see anything. I went back outside, and I said, well, wait a minute, let me go back outside and look at the Pathfinder. So I walk back out and look at the Pathfinder, and that's what I discovered, the scratch across the back. It's bright white, so that indicates it's fresh. I told her while she was standing there, you're going to jail, I'm going to call the police. Okay, step back. 
When you said to her, you're going to jail, I'm going to call the police, did she respond? Uh, I don't think so, no. Okay, now I'd like to see the video. Okay. You can see as her hand goes up Shh. right there. I'll take a look at it again. Is there any reason that you stopped behind his car? Uh, Is there any I reason? Stopped to sniff. I stopped with him. You see her right hand, right there. I'm moving my arm as I walk. Yes, and that's what a scratch is. Okay, can I take a look at the photographs of the scratch, please? Okay, so based upon what you saw, you called the police. And based upon that, the police came, interviewed you, and viewed this tape. Actually, I had contacted the police after he had yelled at me. He's a little incorrect. Could I show you where? Sure. I did walk my dog around here. His cars impede the sidewalk, so I moved. And I had completed my whole route over to about here, and he did indeed come out and yell at me. I caught a few words of it, said I'm walking my dog, waved my arms, and continued on. Mm -hmm. That's not the first time he has yelled at me as I've been walking, and I went home and I filed an incident report, and I do have that. Just a second. The second just, time I've you're... been walking and he's come out and yelled at me. It's very unnerving. That's a lie. Just We're I, very sorry. far. Sorry. It's gonna cost you getting your car fixed. You something you don't understand. I have it. Something you don't, but something you don't understand. I'm allowing both of you to tell me your sides of the story. You can't say that's a lie. Do you understand? Uh, yes, I'm not cutting you off. I let you tell me your story, sir. I let you tell me what happened, and I want to give the defendant the same opportunity. You can't interrupt her. Now you understand that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I will tell you what I don't understand, Miss Morell. You see, if I had got into a kerfuffle with him, which you had, because he said you and your granddaughter, which I actually think was socially wrong with regard to your granddaughter, but with regard to you, he doesn't want you there, right? I wouldn't walk up a cul-de-sac to go past his house. If it were me, I see plenty of space where you can walk. You can cross the street from your house and walk in the street the other way. And then when you come back, you can walk the other way. You don't have to go inside that cul-de-sac to walk anywhere near his house. That's looking for trouble. Can I just say something? About what? The trend that... Another gentleman, he tried to uh, accuse of scratching his car. Are you her husband? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm gonna let you stand up now and you're gonna show me where he accused somebody else of keying his car in the back in January. Show me. Zachary Martin is accusing his neighbor Nancy Morell of keying his car. Nancy is countersuing for a false arrest and lawyer fees. So you have a counterclaim, and your counterclaim is for false arrest. He didn't arrest you. The police arrested you. And the police arrested you based upon what they believed, after looking at that video, was probable cause that a crime was committed and probable cause to believe you participated in the commission of that crime, which is vandalism. He didn't make a citizen's arrest. The police made an arrest. And not only did they make an arrest, but they were serious enough to have you get a lawyer. Your counsel went in. I assume your new counsel asked for an adjournment. I assume your new counsel you were there. I believe so. I with... was not there, ma'am. I waited out in the hall, and my lawyer represented me. Fine. So you, I assume that you knew that your lawyer was going to ask for an adjournment. The lawyer didn't prepare you for trial, did he? No. No. Your Honor. So he was... I'm not I, I, listening I, I, to I'm you. A, as a witness, can I just say something? About what? The trend that another gentleman, he tried to uh, accuse of scratching his car. We have... Oh, right I will, that. just a second. That I'll listen to in a minute. Okay. The second time your case was on, did you go into court or did you wait outside? I waited outside. In the then you, then if you waited outside, you knew again your lawyer was going to ask for an adjournment. 
The first time the case was on, did you attend the court hearing? Yes, ma'am. Were you inside the court? Yes, ma'am. She was not there? Uh, she was outside, yes, ma'am. The second time when the case was adjourned, were you in court? Yes, ma'am. Was she there? Yes, ma'am. Outside or inside? She was outside. Did her lawyer ask for an adjournment? Continuance. A continuance? Yes, ma'am. Same thing? Yes, ma'am. Did it happen more than twice? Yes. On the third time you went to court, did you go to court? Yes, ma'am. Was she in court? Yes, ma'am. Inside or outside? She was outside. And what happened, I had sold the house and we moved an hour away. Just a second. You were there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, I'm going to let you stand up now and you're going to show me where he accused somebody else of keying his car in the back in January. Show me. No, no, no. no. Well, this says that on January 18th, which was four days before this incident, you reported another vandalism to a Nissan Titan. Yes, ma'am. Is that the car that you saw her key or believe she keyed? No, ma'am, that's a different vehicle. That's what I thought. That's a different vehicle. That has nothing to do with this car. Well, he, it, just the, just gentleman, the gentleman that he accused it of, he didn't even oh, have a rest or didn't want to press charges. Just a second. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to let you stand up and I'm going to give you my end of the riot act, because if this is what you're deluding yourself with, I'm going to tell you. He didn't have video of anybody on the 18th around his car. In your wife's case, sir, he had prior experience with her. She had no business walking right in front of the house when there are plenty of other places to walk. If they are not on great terms, he had every right to call the police, show them the video, and they had every right to arrest her. Do you understand I that? I understand that, but Good. that doesn't this has prove nothing... that she scratched the vehicle. That doesn't prove that. Just a sec. That's what a trial is for, sir. That was up to a jury. What your wife is suing him for is for false arrest. He didn't arrest her. The police arrested her. Now sit. May I see the... Invoice. Did you have you had the car uh, fixed? Yes, ma'am. I have an estimate, and I also have the police report. Where I'd like to see both. Words. I'd like to see both. So the police officer indicated that after you were told about what the officer saw on the video, you've decided to make no more statements about the incident, and you were placed under arrest for malicious damage. The officer also reported that the scratch on the back of the car was fresh because there were fresh paint chips on the street that were red paint chips as a red car that came off that car, which demonstrates to the eyes of any layperson that since there's traffic back and forth there, if there are fresh scratches and fresh paint, it means it just happened. So your counterclaim for false arrest and anything attendant thereto is dismissed. I did not do it, Your Honor. Right, well, okay. Maybe the case was dismissed. That doesn't mean you're entitled to money from him. Police had probable cause to believe that a crime was committed and probable cause to believe that you committed that crime. The rest of it is up to a jury. So you have a beef with the police department, not with him. They had an absolute right to arrest you. I'm not giving you $2,500 for this scratch, sir. Get it out of your mind. Do you understand? Why not? It's not a $2,500 scratch. I mean, that's an estimate from a... $500. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're done. This court is adjourned. Well, she was incorrect because I did not do it. You know, we took an oath when we went inside to tell the truth, and she lied repeatedly, and she got mad at me when I said that's a lie, but it was a lie. That he saw me walking by and looked at the car and said, oh. The next day, I called the police to see what happened, and he took me and informed me they, they arrested her. I thought they were there because I had called about him harassing me, and then all of a sudden, they just said, you scratched his car, and I said, Without no, I didn't. Proof. I think she should have stayed in jail longer. They placed me in custody. The lady does nothing but lie. She's a liar. It was horrible. I actually thought his behavior when the defendant brought her granddaughter over subsequently and said, can't she play? Because evidently there are two or three kids who live close by, and they always play together. All of a sudden, the granddaughter is excluded from that play.
there's a certain amount, as a parent, he should have had some sense of that and said, well, of course they can play, but your daughter owes me an apology. You know, if you're behaving like an adult, your daughter owes me an apology. I tried to do a responsible thing. I didn't want to let my son watch more than one Other stranger child, child mm -hmm. in a pool, which is absolutely smart because, God forbid, something happened to one of those children, they would certainly turn around and sue him. Yeah. So he did the responsible thing. Was it hurtful to the other child? Yes. According to him, his daughter was playing at Patrick's house. Mm -hmm. She came over and said, you can't come because they're little children. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. You can't come. Only one person can come. But you're a grown-up. So understand how that could be hurtful to an eight-year-old. Anyway, I think that they both behaved badly, and he's very smart to have moved out of that. Out of the cul-de-sac, out, out of, of the, the neighborhood. Yeah, neighborhood. could you understand why she would walk her dog there? Yeah, see, I agreed with you that if you've already had even just a hint of distaste with any of your neighbors, I just walk on the other side of the street, just avoid it, and walk this seems like a, a perfectly avoidable house in, in the well, cul-de-sac. You, you actually so have to go make... into his loop in order to make the loop, mm -hmm. so... I don't know. I think both sides questionable, but I'm glad that he got something that you were willing to give him for his car. Yeah, because... get, your car, get your car fixed reasonably. Yeah. And the police absolutely had a right to arrest her. Yeah. There was a complaint. They looked at the complaint. They saw the damage. They saw it was fresh. They saw her right there on the video. Mm -hmm. They had a history of bad feelings mm -hmm. between them. They had an absolute right to arrest her. Yeah. Too bad. Linda Bernadeschi is suing salesman Eric West for the cost of skincare products. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Okay. Case number 2114, Berdaski versus West. Thank you. You're welcome. Would you pronounce your last name for me? Bernadeschi. Bernadeschi. Yes. Well, I read your complaint. I somehow was taken back to my own experience just walking down any street that has a new cosmetic place. So I sort of believe I understand what your experience was, at least initially, with Mr. West. Mr. West, you're a salesman for what company? And where are they located? Well, they're all over the United States, but I worked for one in San Francisco. Where are the products manufactured? Is In California, actually. Where? Chasworth, California. Okay. And they have brick-and-mortar stores all over the country? Mm hmm And they have many products, but under that one name? Yeah, they have many products. Many products, but they're all... Yes. They have multiple products and multiple locations all through California, and it looks like a bit of Arizona as well. How many? Upwards of 20 locations. Okay. And can you tell me, Sarah, is it a corporation? I'd assume so. They're about page. How long have you worked for the company, sir? That company in that location? About... Three years. Where is the corporate headquarters for the company? It's located in San Mateo. Do you know if the company was incorporated in the state of California? Yes, I believe it was. Under that name? Mm hmm. Uh huh, it's not an answer. Oh, yes, sorry, my apologies. It looks like it was an LLC out of Oregon, but is listed as inactive as of 12 22 of 2020. There's no company in California? It just says the jurisdiction in which the LLC was created is Oregon. That's as far as I could tell. They have a company address that's listed in a head office is in where? Portland, Oregon. What do you know about Portland, Oregon? It's a lot of, a lot of um, hippies. A lot of hippies. What about your company? Oh. Do you know anything about your company? <laughs> yes, um, I think it's probably another location there as well. Do you know anything about the company that you work for? Was it incorporated in the state of Oregon? No, it was incorporated in California. And um, I think Oregon maybe they maybe has a franchise. I can't tell from public record anything from further. the state of California. I tried looking up their headquarter information, and all I got was this cosmetics LLC from Oregon. Okay. And while I'm taking this information, I want you to take a look and see if there are any court cases. Sure. Let's try the state of California and the state of Oregon. Sure. And the only thing that you could find was the Oregon company under that name that is no longer active. As it, might not be, it might not be the same company, but it has the same name listed in Oregon, so I would assume so, but there's no information on their website about okay. their headquarter information. Anyway, Ms. Bernadacci, 
Trying to think of the date that you made these purchases. What date was it? It was February the 21st, 2022. And you were shopping, you were walking with your dog. Mm -hmm. Had a little dog? Yes. What kind of dog? A Shih Tzu. A Shih Tzu, yes. my fave. Oh, yeah, mine too. She's my third one. You were walking in a mall. What mall and where? In Santa Clara, California. That's where you were working? Mm hmm How long had you been working there? Three years. Okay, this is what the case is about, as far as I can tell. You were walking. Was it this gentleman who was standing outside? No, it was, it was somebody not, else. It was somebody else. With it was a somebody else. One of the other people who works at your business? I was the one who offered her a sample. Outside? No, in the front of the store. Well, but it's in the front of the store. I didn't step outside Miss of the store. I was in the front of our store, not outside of it, but inside the store, and I handed her a sample. Just a second. Sort of inconsistent with my life's experience of these things, but let's see. Had you gone to his store? No. You're walking through the mall. Is it an indoor mall or an outdoor indoor. mall? Indoor. And when you passed that store, tell me what happened. I was en route to a specific store. A man with a basket was standing in front of the store. So there was a man outside with a basket? It was a basket. Hold on. Where basket. outside? Right outside of the store. And it wasn't this gentleman? No, it was not. Tell me what the person looked like who gave you the he sample. He was. He, I believe he was Caucasian. He was shorter than Eric. I believe he was partially bald, and I believe he wore glasses, but I can't be sure. I would know if, him if I saw him. Okay. And so continue with your story. You're standing there with a basket of samples outside the store. Okay. It's totally consistent with so, my own personal experience. Okay. So he offered me a sample of a product. And I said, no, thank you, I'm not interested. And he said, no, uh, please, he said, you'll like it. And I says, I really, I'm in a hurry, and I'm not interested in any of your products. At that point, Eric walked a couple of steps out from the store and started showering my dog and myself with compliments, just like over the top. And he said, why don't you come in my store? I've got a surprise for you. You are going to love me. He said, I said... So he was doing his salesman shtick. Yeah, yeah, And much. from the smile on his face, it's exactly what he was doing, his salesman shtick. <laughs> yeah, and pretty much you ran... on commission. Yes. Right. Okay, so now he's showering both you and your little shih tzu with compliments and how beautiful the shih tzu is and how he's going to give you things that are going to take away this line and that line and this crease or whatever. And I'm sound like such a sweet and kind person that, you know, he's got a surprise for me. Follow I got me. it. Okay. Go ahead. So he got you into the store. Uh-huh. At that point, he asked me to have a seat. And again, I said, really, I'm not interested. I want to go. So then someone took my dog. And Where was the dog? On a leash in my hand. And uh, he says, here, I'll take your dog. And I said, no, I'll hold her. And he says, no, I'll, I'm going to take care of her. And I'm going, wait a minute. And next thing I knew, Eric was practically on top of me. This chair was located in a position, well, his chair was much higher than mine. So you were sitting in a chair like mine? Yeah, well, a, a, a chair, just like a... A makeup chair? Yes. Or a hairdresser's chair? Kind of like a... A uh, makeup chair. And he was sitting on a chair or a stool? A stool. Stool. Is that right, Eric? I'm talking to you. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, that's a yes. Okay. And your stool was higher than her chair? That is incorrect. We both were sitting on stools. The same stool? The same stool. Was yours higher? No, it was the same size. Okay, go ahead. So at that point, he just started applying different products to my, I believe he started with my hand. And then, uh, let, here, let me try some of this on your face. And I'm looking around for my dog, like, what's going on here? And because he was very aggressive and pushy and... Well, just tell me what he did without trying to editorialize. Okay, so basically he Not was... basically. He put on all this goop mm -hmm. on your face, on your hands. Somebody else in the store was holding your dog while he was putting this on you. He didn't force you into the chair. He aggressively coaxed you into the mm -hmm. chair, is what you're telling me, by complimenting you. I mean, he didn't physically drag you into the store. You walked in by yourself. Right. Okay. He was using his best aggressive salesman routine. 
not easy to get somebody in the store, right, Eric? I mean, it was never easy to get me in one of those stores, and I shop with her all the time. <laughs> and she's got more lotions and potions and stuff <laughs> on her counter than any other human being I know. And I've never seen anybody successful in giving her a free sample and getting her into the store. So you must be very good, because we have a few of those stores right in the neighborhood. You must be really talented. He is. Just a second. So before we finish with her, and since you originally started, Mr. West, with, no, it was me outside. It wasn't you outside initially. It was somebody else. You came out afterwards. Well, actually, I believe her. So I want you to understand that her description of the person who initially approached her was so specific. And then the fact that you came out and joined that person because then you became a tag team is totally convincing to me. I want you to understand that. I didn't feel that I was going to be able to leave the store. I've been held against my will before and kidnapped. And I was literally traumatized at that point. When were you held against your will and kidnapped? Linda Bernadeschi claims salesman Eric West owes her a refund for skincare products she never wanted. Do you have family, Eric? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Living family? Yes, I do. Okay. You don't want to make a fool out of yourself here, right? Absolutely not. Great. So I want you to understand that I believe the plaintiff when she tells me you weren't the initial person out there who stopped her with a free sample. I was the only one working that day, Your Honor. I don't Not believe easy. you. Okay. Because you couldn't have got her where you got her to, which is the story she's going to finish, because by the time she got out of the store, she had $8,000 worth of your product. Which is also not accredited by the Better Business Bureau and has multiple complaints out against them. So, just for the record. No, that's an important record. Keep looking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so at that point, I decided I'm going to leave and take my dog and get out of here. And I attempted to get up, and he was sitting higher up than I was in, in such close proximity that I was unable to fully stand up. And as he saw me attempting to, he comes back over with another product. He was across the store, and he... And well, if he was across the store, Miss Barnadacci, if he was across the store, then he wasn't hovering over you. So what I tried to tell you before is... I want you to tell me not what you think is best for your case. If he, either he's standing over you so you couldn't get up or he's across the room, if he's across the room because he went to get another product, you could have gotten up and left. No, actually, he wasn't across the room. He was just like, I think it was at the desk behind well, Whatever. He wasn't right on top of you. Uh, no. You but... don't understand. I don't believe that you were held against your will in the store. I don't believe that they did that. I think he was overly aggressive and he chose a target. Yeah, and I was... Okay, and at what point did you purchase all of this product, which is the subject of this case, because you want your money back? I didn't feel that I was going to be able to leave the store. I've been held against my will before and kidnapped, and I was literally traumatized at that point. When were you held against your will and kidnapped? Oh, this was like... 15 years ago, maybe? Well, I would remember that, whether it was 15 years ago. I want you to tell me about that. That forms part of who you are and who the person is that I have to consider with regard to whether or not this was a forced sale or just an overly aggressive salesman. So I want you to tell me, was there a police report of a prior kidnapping? There was. Yes. And did they actually find the people who kidnapped you? Yes. Was there a trial with regard to those people? I don't believe so, because it, the guy was on parole, and so he didn't want to go to trial. So they violated his parole, and he went back to prison? Yes. And that was in California? Yes. But... So when you were in the store, and you said you felt as if you couldn't leave, you were under pressure. How many people were in the store? Uh, well, there was Eric and the gentleman that was standing outside of the store. And then a woman came from be behind the register in the back room. And he was telling me how 
This woman is a world-renowned uh, facial beauty massage, uh, whatever, expert, running drag on me, pretty much. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, uh, now you're up from your chair. I want to know how the sale came about. Well, because I didn't feel that I was going to be able to leave. Okay, so tell me what happened. Okay, so I said, look, I don't even have any money to cover this. And I'm looking... To cover he what? He asked me for my to cover identification. What? To cover the cost of these beauty products he wanted to sell me. Okay, how many were there? There was four or five different... Uh, creams. Creams, and then there was a device that... I don't know what you call him, but it was a device that he had used on me while I was sitting in the chair. And, you know, s telling me, look in the mirror, doesn't this, you know, can't you tell a big difference? And he even took my phone and took a picture, a couple of pictures of me. He says, look at, I said, I can tell a little bit of a difference, but it's not worth the money. And again, I don't even have the money, so I really need to go. So he asked for my driver's license for, to register the product. And then he told me... I to register the product. The product that I bought. Oh, so you did say you would buy the device. Yeah. I, I, just, just, mm -hmm. You did say you would buy the device. And how much was the device? It was just shy of $8,000. I've got the receipts right I'd like there. to see it. Do you have it with you? Oh, the device? Yeah. No, I wish I would have brought it with me, but it's, it hasn't been opened. I still have it. I haven't touched it. You wanted to see the receipts? You yes. Okay. They're right here. By the way, what time of day did you go to the store? This was approximately 6.30 because it was near closing time. Oh, here's, here's the rest of them. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going specifically for one lipstick. That was, that was all I was at the mall for. And it was almost closing. Sarah Rose, yeah. take a look under that name. I didn't find a device on their website. I already looked, if that's what you're going to You looked at this 3D ultrasound and face body? I've just found six products that are creams for face and body it's on the website. I'd like to see what this 3D ultrasound is, this $8,000 piece of equipment that you sold her. You have a picture of it? Okay. Could you get that for me? He's going to give it to Sarah. Sarah's going to look up this nonsense. Thank you. Some more receipts. So what I see that you did was spread some of this around different credit cards. Yes. And you want to tell me how did that happen? Well, I said, these aren't even my credit cards. I'm around the roommates. And he says, well, you could put half on your roommate's credit card. And I says, no, I am not going to do that. And uh, he says, yeah, make him pay for it. And I'm looking at this guy like, what's going on? What are you on? doing with your roommate's credit cards? Because he's an older gentleman. I've got the power of attorney, and I shop for him. He's not able to do all that. Is he a roommate, or are yes. you a caregiver? A, he's a roommate. We've lived together for 30 years. Anyway, just a very He hasn't good... been old and sick for 30 years. Well, he's kind of... <laughs> he may like... be old and sick now, but he wasn't old and sick for 30 years. Oh, well, no. I mean... We... Do you live together as a couple for 30 years? Do you live together as an almost couple? No. He's like my father, almost. We each have our separate rooms, and I pretty much take care of his house and cook for him, and he doesn't go many places. He's pretty much a recluse. He doesn't like to go to the store. And uh, so I do all the grocery shopping and everything. Okay. Who hired you? It wasn't hire. I was in business with him. Okay, well, it's getting more interesting. Who leases the store where you are? D don't look up in the air. It, it's going to get only worse. Linda Bernadeschi is accusing salesman Eric West of holding her against her will and selling her an unwanted skincare wand. Do we have a picture of that thing? The Juven. It's, it, it's. Yeah, I have it. What? I have it. It looks like this. It's got this on one side, and then I don't know what this is trying to show you. Ultrasound face and body slimming. Yeah. She doesn't look like she needs slimming. She asked 
for something that would tighten her skin, as she said that in her younger years she had a lot of issues with drug abuse when we had our conversations, and she's asking for something that can actually help her look more youthful and help her skin tighten. And this is something that she discussed with me when we were sitting at the table. What's your educational experience? High school, college. Where? I went to, like, a couple of film and television schools. I asked you what college you went to. Oh, um, Olympic College in Washington State. And was that a four-year program? Two-year. Two-year. Mm -hmm. Is that a brick-and-mortar college or is that an online brick, college? Brick-and-mortar. And what did you study there? Just the basics. What basics? Gen, gen eds, you know, your associates, your gen eds. And it had nothing to do with my sales and skin care, but my sales and skin care... I, I actually deal with every client fairly, and I pride myself on integrity. Don't tell me that you deal with every client fairly. She wanted her money back the next day. She didn't want her money back the next day. She didn't even come back the next day. When did she come back? It was like a week or two later, she came back to the store and wanted a refund, and I said, well, no, you... No, no, just a second. Okay. She came into the store on February 21st, 2022. Mm -hmm. You get home with all these products. You spread it around... Let's say this is aggressive salesmanship. Now you're home. You had a previous experience with being taken against your will and held against your will, according to what you told me. Yeah. So you know that when that happens, the police get involved. You didn't go to the police no, not... when you left to say, you know, I was held against my will. You mm -hmm. took the products and you took the products home, right? Well, I didn't go directly home. I went to my friend's house. She lives two blocks from there. I was so traumatized, I couldn't drive. And I was beside myself. Okay. That was February 21st. Yes. So what did you do next with regard to Mr. West? Okay. So by that time, it was about 9 o'clock at night, 10, when I got home. And uh, I thought, well, I'll call tomorrow to tell him I want a refund. Actually, I called him and told him that, and he says, well, you're supposed to be down here. When the next... Yeah. When did you call him and tell him you wanted a refund? It was uh, the next day. When he called me, I'm sorry, he called me the next day and says, where are you? And I says, I'm at home. And he says, well, how come you're not here for your free 12 facials that I offered you? And I says, I don't want anything from you. And I didn't ask for anything from him. So he called you to come in for a free facial? Yes. And? And, and I says, I don't plan on coming in for any of the facials, much less 12 of them. What I'd like to come in for is a refund on these products that I don't need. And I felt pressured into buying yesterday. And I can't. You know, I don't okay. want them. You say that didn't happen for a week? Your Honor, she had a contract with us for six months' worth of treatments, hydrofacials, that she that we included in her purchase that she signed. And I'd like to see what she signed. It's actually on my phone. I didn't print out a, a copy. I Why not? Because I was rushing this morning and I was... Well, you were rushing this morning. You knew you were coming to court for days. What do you mean you didn't print out a contract? Do you have a copy of a contract that you signed? Yes, I do. Fine. I'll take a look at your copy. I also have a police report. Do you want to see the I'd like police? to see a police report, and I'd like to see a copy of the contract you signed. Okay, and okay. here's some fictitious businesses that he's got as well. Okay, I the contract... can't hear you. Just hand me the stuff. Okay, this is the police report. I want to see the contract. I'll read the police report okay. while you're looking for it. Here's the contract. Skin care, is that your company? Is that the product you're referring to? Yes. Those are the medical devices that we actually retail in the store, and we demonstrate them on the clients. And then typically clients, when they see a difference, they're like, oh, wow. I, listen, and... you're not selling me, sir. Oh, you know, so I I'm making, understand. This is not a sales pitch to me. What's your commission when you sell an $8,000 light to make your skin nice? What's your commission? 20%. So yours personally is 20%. How much do they buy them for? I'm not sure. What do you think? I have no... What do you think? I'm Take not... a good guess. You've been working for them for three years. I don't know. And I think that you'd have to factor in, like, the rent for the establishment and all of those things. So I don't really know what the profit margin would be. Your Honor, on their website, they state that each individually owned brick-and-mortar store is not affiliated with them, that they so run their franchise. own stores. It's, a, it's sort of a franchise-esque situation. Who owns your store? Or is it a franchise? It's... 
a franchise? No, it's not a question. It sounds like you were asking me a question. Is it a company-owned store or is it a franchise? There's a company that owns the store. But it's a franchise. Yes, I believe so. I'm not familiar with the legalities of the location and all the business agreements. And Who contracts. hired you? Um, it wasn't hire. I was, I was in business with him. Okay, well, but it's getting more interesting. Okay, yes. so it wasn't to hire. You're in business with a man whose name is what? Um, don't think about it. I don't if you're in business with somebody, <laughs> yeah. you're a smart boy. You went I don't know to how to a, pronounce You went to a two-year college. What's the name of your business partner? Um, I'm not, I don't know his last I don't know how to pronounce the last name. What? I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Spell it. So it's, I don't actually know how to spell it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And who leases the store? 